came up with key turnovers in route to a 38-7 win. Today, they try to remain perfect at home as they welcome Bowling Green to DeKal. So strike up the fan. Northern Illinois football comes your way next. It's a college football Saturday in DeKalb, Illinois. The Northern Illinois Huskies play host to the Falcons of Bowling Green State University. Good afternoon, everybody. Alongside Bob Kamel, I'm David Kaplan. And Bobby, see an interesting matchup today. Bowling Green, Northern Illinois, pretty comparable defensively. Offensively, though, we may see some differences. Well, I don't think there's any question. Northern Illinois is slowly becoming Jerry Kill's football team in total. In other words, they're assuming his personality, the personality of Jerry, his assistant coaches, and all the things that Jerry wants to do. They've improved every single week, David. All right, let's take a look at Miko Brown. He is one of a tandem of backs. In fact, you may see three guys out there carrying the mail, but Miko Brown, very tough to stop. Well, Miko Brown, Chad's fan, basically a little bit of Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside. Miko Brown takes the ball out into the perimeter. He has the ability to take the football the length of the field. Chad's fan, a little bit of an inside runner between the tackles, but both very effective and both very complete backs. I've seen them both catch the football, and most importantly, I've seen both of these young guys block effectively. All right, Chandler Harness, part of three guys that have Ducked under center for Northern Illinois. Some injuries have cost some guys some opportunities. Harnish has assumed the controls and is doing a really nice job. Well, David, he has all the throws. He, he has touch. He can throw the ball to the far hash, the out to the far hash, which is often considered the you know, judgment of the arm strength of the quarterback. And for a young guy, he gets his team into the right play. And that is critically important, should never be overlooked, and he takes care of the football. All right, it's Northern Illinois and Bowling Green. It's a football Saturday. Here on Comcast Sportsnet, we've got the opening kickoff, the starting lineup. It's all coming up next. At Bank, Bank where banking is a pleasure. All right, we are just about set for football here on a cool, crisp Saturday in DeKalb, Illinois. To the sidelines we go, the third member of our crew, Jim Blaney. All right, thank you very much, David. Jerry, obviously to an outside observer, it looks like this football team is getting better every week. But give us a perspective on some of the intangibles on this team. Are you pleased with the way they've come together, and are you pleased with their confidence level? Well, I think, you know, we're, we are what we are. I tell them all the time we're ordinary people trying to accomplish extraordinary things. And, uh, you know, you just got to play each week, and you got to play as hard as you can. And to this point, for seven games, they have they've, they've done that. They've played hard, and uh, hopefully we can continue. But this is another week, and you know how college football is. Jerry, thanks for your time. Good luck today. Thank you very much. David, back to you. All right. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Coach. So it'll be an interesting day, Bob Kamel, and two good teams, beautiful conditions, a little crisp. But let's take a look at the keys to the game. Resource Bank, the sponsor of our keys to the game, where banking is a pleasure. Bob. Well, we talked a little bit about the two running backs that Northern Law has. They have Chad Spann as well as Miko Brown. A little bit more Miko Brown, I think, against Bowling Green to be very effective. A little bit more speed, a little more speed to the outside. Earn an A English, that's something that you and I have never done. However, earn an A in English because of the great, great pass rusher, defensive lineman with a great motor, relentless defensive player, Larry English. Larry will come up big yet again. For Bowling Green, they have to get a lot of pressure on the young quarterback. They have to flush him from the pocket, force him to run the football. Pressure on Chandler, they have to do it. And the reason they have to do it is one of the things that, that is critically important, okay? They have to hang on to the football. They have to keep Chandler Arnish, and this very volatile NIU offense off the field. All right. It is time now for the NIU MBA program open kickoff. Take the NIU MBA challenge. The NIU MBA program is a proud sponsor of NIU Athletics. Okay, we are ready to roll. Kenny Lewis, senior out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is the deep man for the Falcons of Bowling Green State University. And for Northern Illinois, kicker Mike Salerno, a junior out of Orland Park, ready to put the ball in the air, and we will be underway in DeKal. David Kaplan, Bob Kamel, Jim Blaney, and our fabulous spotter, Hollywood Todd Armour, our producer, Jeff Nelson. We thank you for joining us for great college football. And it will be a touchback. 
Adrian Hodges made the catch. And we will have Bowling Green on the attack, first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. David, as we start this football game, we see the kick going into the end zone. The flags are stiff, the wind is come. This wind today will be a factor in this football game. Now, Northern Illinois won the toss and deferred, so they get the ball to start the second half. They were kicking downhill, so to speak, with the win, and you're asking Bowling Green to go 80 yards into a very stiff breeze on a very chilly day. Anthony Turner is the single back for BG. And he gets the first handoff, and he goes absolutely nowhere. He's going to lose probably two yards. Alex Crutch in there to make the play on the first play from scrimmage. Take a look at the Applebee's starting lineups. Applebee's car side, they, you call it in, they bring it out to you. Corey Partridge, Marquise Parks, Jer uh, Jimmy Scheidler, Jeremiah Kelly, Chris Bullock, the skill position players. There's the big offensive line anchored by the center. And then Brandon Curtis, the right guard. All right, here we go. Second down and 12 for Bowling Green. They stay on the ground again, hand off, and it may get back. Turner may get back to the line of scrimmage. Larry English up to make the hit from his defensive end spot, number 51, phenomenal motor. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. Brought to you by Applebee's, there's Northern's defensive line. English, Kraus, Crutch, and Rush. English, the star of that group. The backers, Allen, McCarthy, and Kuba. And the secondary of Rice, Sobel, Bryant, and Chase Carter. Third and 10. Pressure coming, and the ball is nearly intercepted. Wow. Mike Kraus nearly got the pick. Well, this is a fundamental screenplay. Mike Kraus, when you see that tackle set the way he set, inordinately deep, you, that's when a tackle, a defensive tackle, has the ability to read the screenplay, and that's exactly what he did. Oh, oh right in his hands. Look at in there, Michael, and you'd be running into the end zone. He can't believe it. Tyler Sheehan really had absolutely no chance. There was a ton of pressure on him. Miko Brown, the deep man now, and there, you can't expect too much of a punt here, Bob, when you look at the way the flags are blowing. They are... Straight out. The Huskies should come out with great field position, at least great field position. It's blocked. I think they got a piece of they it. They did we get a piece find of it. Out. Absolutely. Official says yes. I thought that was going to be smothered. Well, with Bowling Green, any visiting team in any situation, okay, especially this has been a kind of an up and down football team, you have to come in and start to play a clean game. You can't let Northern rush the punter this way. Here they come. Nice job. Excellent job there. That was Spencer Williamson who came in. How do you not get more of the ball there? I thought it was going to be smothered. Well, you know, you don't really go for the ball. You go for that sweet spot that's about three yards in front of the football and get your hands up in the air. He didn't have that opportunity that time. He's basically off to the side a little bit. Nico Brown will get the start at tailback. You'll see a lot of Chad Spann, some of Justin Anderson. Flag flies on first down. Miko Brown dragged down right at the 50-yard line. He may have gained two. I think it's going to be an encroachment penalty. We'll find out. Tackled by Eric Dozier. Flag on the play. Flag's going to be against Northern <laughs> Illinois. On the illegal ship. There's a look at Chandler Harnish's numbers, Bob. Chandler Harnish, uh, as I mentioned before, he uh, he has all the throws, but his numbers are great. But again, a young guy getting the team. What do I mean by getting the team into the right play? It means analyzing the defense and going to the audible that will give you the best opportunity to move the football downfield. And off to Miko Brown. Miko Brown makes a man miss. Miko Brown nearly rips off 15 yards. They'll call it 14, and it'll bring up a second and one. P.J. Mahoney came in to make the tackle. Take a look at our Applebee starters for Northern Illinois, the offense of Marcus Perez, Reed Cunningham, 
Landon Cox has been a go-to guy. There's the offensive line anchored by the big fella, Jason Anye Buwaku. John Prost, another anchor in there in the center, Eddie Adamski. Nico Brown for the third straight play, makes a man miss, cuts it back inside, and picks up a first down, move the chains. First down Northern Illinois at the 36 yard line. A look at the starters on defense for Bowling Green. Dyro Briggs, Michael Ream, Nick Davis, and Joe Schaefer, the defensive line. Enrique Dozier, the middle linebacker, a very talented player. There's the secondary. And it'll be a first and 10, Northern Illinois, the 12.07 mark here in the first quarter. That play will go absolutely nowhere. Real solid defensive play out of Adrian Baker, number 47. Adrian Baker, this type of an offense, the spread offense, great fake, very deceptive. He gets the heels depth of the defense offensive lineman. Now he becomes a linebacker. Great job, great analysis. You know, those are the kind of things that Bowling Green's gonna have to do throughout this game. Because I can assure you, Chandler Harnish, when he handles the football, he is very deceptive. It's a second down and 11 at the Bowling Green 37. Have yet to see a pass opportunity from Northern Illinois. They'll stay on the ground again. Miko Brown bangs it to the 35. It'll bring up a third and nine, Bob. So Northern has yet to go up top. Well, I think you'll see a little bit of play action pass here. You know, give the ball to Miko Brown. Give the ball to Miko Brown. Make that defense so run conscious. And you know, one thing with linebackers, free safeties, the secondary, you have to clear the fake. By what I mean by that, David, you have to make sure that the quarterback detaches the football in the fake before he throws the football downfield. That's what play action does. That's when you're a running team, what makes you so effective with play action passes. Chandler Harness barks off the signals. Miko Brown, the single back. Harness will throw, looking, looking, fires. It's broken up. Real nice defensive play by Antonio Smith. Landon Cox was the intended receiver. So it will be a fourth down situation. Northern Illinois is going to try the field goal. Downwind, Salerno certainly has this kind of leg. Well, when you roll Chandler Harnish out into the flat, you give him a run pass option. But there was a spy technique right there. And by a spy technique, there was someone from Bowling Green assigned to him in case he did take off with the football. He had to throw the football downfield. Credit Antonio Smith, the, uh, the corner, senior corner out of Miami, making a nice play. Snap, set, Salerno's kick is up. It is good. 52 yards unofficially giving Northern Illinois a 3-0 lead, previous career long of 49. We'll be back to put it back in play after this. Here's something to celebrate. Three nothing, Huskies over Falcons, Northern over Bowling Green. There is Diesel the dog, and that's Victor E. Husky, the Northern Illinois mascot. They get it done. The University Plaza Drive summary, it is where to live. Well, at least we have our dogs in order this week. We've got Diesel and Victor E. By the way, that 52 yard field goal, you look at the scoring drive right there, sixth place, 17 yards, took 255. That ties the school record for longest field goal in Northern Illinois history. One of the things with the kicking game, we talk about the operation, the snap, the protection, the hold, all that. Northern Illinois uh, has been flawless, flawless, what we refer to as the operation. That's off to Jay Sabel, the special teams coach and secondary coach for Northern Illinois. He's done a wonderful job. Driving kick that will be down. Well, it's not going to be down in the end zone. Instead, he tries to bring it out. Let's see what the call is. 
It's a touchback, David. It will be a touchback. It will be a touchback. That's where there has to be communication. You have two guys back there. One of them has to be the dominant returner. In other words, it's my call. It's not your call. It's my call. And now you can't look upfield. You have to make, you have to get back and make sure that he has the, the other returner has the ball secure just for this reason. I thought that ball might have popped out. Looked like Chad Spann was in there trying to strip it. Well, special teams coach, you bring these guys over the sideline and talk to them. Who's going to make the call, David? It's, 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 it's exactly it's just the same as a center fielder and a right fielder or right whatever. You know. Uh, you have to, that is fundamental football. Then get your head around to make sure that your partner indeed has to with the ball clean or to see if he needs some help. They stay on the ground, Bowling Green. Handoff will pick up a good chunk, maybe five. Let's go to the sidelines, Jim Blaney. David and Bob, one thing very important about the wind down here. It's one of the things you do in golf. You don't look at the way the wind is blowing at your level. You look at the top of the trees. And if you look at the flags at the top of the stadium, the way to describe the wind is helping from the left for Northern Illinois. And if you notice Salerno's kick barely slipped inside the right upright, and both of his kickoffs have gone to the far corner of the field. So the wind is not blowing straight downfield. It's blowing a little bit from the southwest. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy. Stay warm down there. Pressure. Toss, caught, it will be very, very close to a first down. Tyrone Pronti made the catch, and Alex Kuba up to make the hit. Well, we're gonna see a little bit of pressure, okay? Just a little bit of pressure, and he's gonna flush right out of there. And by flush out of there, what I mean is he's gonna get out into the flat. When he gets out into the flat, there has to be contain coming up. A well-thrown football, a good route, the football placed directly between the two defenders, and that's where the wide receiver has to settle, an equidistant position between both defenders. All right, third and less than a yard. They'll keep it on the ground and pick it up easy. Absolutely no doubt about it. Anthony Turner rumbles for the first down. Kuba up again to make a hit. Had his number called a lot so far here. Bobby C, good blocking up front. Good, very good push by the interior of the Bowling Green offensive line. Pad under pad, good leverage, moving their legs. Turner has to be very satisfied with them. That's when you get back to the hole, you're a running back. Guys, that was great. Keep it up, you know, talk to them about it. Encourage them, compliment them. Tyler Sheehan, the quarterback, 6'4", 227, a junior out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Steps back, throws, has his man. And that will be a gain of about six, maybe seven. Chris Wright made the catch. Patrick George up to knock him out of bounds. Well, credit the Bowling Green offensive line yet again. Good pass protection, excellent pass protection. He goes through his progression, basically threw the football off his back foot. And to throw it on a tight spiral the way he did off his back foot, I think that's indicative of some pretty good uh, arm strength. Wide receiver screen is going absolutely nowhere. Corey Partridge made the catch, and Mike Sobel came up and made the hit from strong safety. David, if there's one play in football you can have, and I wouldn't have in my playbook, it's that quick hitch to the, to the wide receiver. I don't like that play. I would rather see the ball dumped off to a running back, basically an elongated sweep, as opposed to picking the football up, throwing it 15, 16 yards to a wide receiver who's catching the football usually in, in a position that is a bit more difficult than meets the eye. Third and seven for Bowling Green. Sheehan looks, throws, has his man. Did he pick up enough? I think he did. I think he's got a first down. We'll see where they spot it. Anthony Turner made the catch, and they will call it a BG first down. I've been very impressed with Anthony Turner. Very impressed with his quarterback here also. Get out into the flat, catches the football over his inside shoulder to his outside shoulder, keeping the football away from the defender. Whistle stops play. Ball start on Bowling Green will push the Falcons five yards back. Been a great tradition. Number 86, Bowling Green. That's a five yard penalty. No first down. Had very good coaches. Most recently, the biggest name to come through the program, Urban Meyer, who then went to Utah, now doing a great job at uh, Florida. Absolutely. 
Mike Brandon, things, now Ur, the yeah, coach. Mike Brandon was a disciple of Urban Myers. Urban Meyer was one of the very, very first uh, innovators when it came to the spread offense. And he went out and talked to people that ran the spread and wanted to run the spread and continues to run the spread. And I'm sure he and Greg Brandon still have communication about it. Sheehan looks, throws, finds Partridge over the middle. David Bryant made the hit back to the sidelines. Jim Blaney. Well, you're talking about Coach Brandon, guys. I'm going to bring up a name that I know Bob Kamel knows and a guy that uh, Brandon was on the staff of years and years ago, and that was Paul Roach at Wyoming. Paul Roach came out of retirement, went to coach the Wyoming Cowboys, had Brandon on the staff, and that was the two years that Wyoming went to back-to-back -back holiday bowls. So he's been in some pretty good staffs in his time. Back to you. Thanks, Jimmy. Let's see what the call is here. It will be called incomplete. Chris Wright, I think, juggled it as he was going out of bounds, Bob. Well, you know, but you talk about Coach Roach, okay? One of the things you, what you run offensively and defensively is what you know. And what you know is where basically you studied your football. And even you may change up here and there a little bit, you always come back to the things that you are most comfortable with. Third and 10 at the Bowling Green 44 for Tyler Sheehan and company. He drops, he looks, he throws, he finds his running back, scoots down the sideline. I think he's going to be short of a first down by about a yard. But again, very effective use of his running back to pick up a chunk of yard. Chris Krause, uh, number 58, may have a real case here for a clip. Watch right there. That is very close. Excellent job by the quarterback, excellent play selection. One of the things you want to see is that young man carrying the football in the far arm, the arm closest to the sideline. Mike Krause looked to me like, uh-oh. Nico Brown, the deep man, standing with his heels on his 10-yard line. The punt is away. It will come down. Miko Brown fair catches it at the five. We have got a timeout on the field. 627 left first quarter. Huskies lead it by a field goal. Friday at 7 on Comcast Sports Net. Fans' best friends. 3 0. Northern Illinois over Bowling Green. 627 left in the first quarter on a sunny, crisp fall afternoon in DeKalb, Illinois. Look at Jerry Kill doing a fine job in his first year as head coach at Northern. Chad Spin now gets his shot in the backfield. He and Miko Brown will alternate possessions, it seems, and uh, we'll sometimes see Justin Anderson in when they run the direct snap. Right now, it's Chandler Harnish at QB. Chad Spin tries to bounce up, makes one man miss, makes another man miss and he drags a tackler out to about the nine yard line so pretty good run Bob well Span is, is an, an excellent runner but one of the reasons he's such a good runner is because he has such great patience he's very strong he has a low center of low center of gravity I mean he leans for the extra yard look at that little shake right there he, he's relentless I always talk about a back keeping his feet going regardless of the situation and that's why he has been so successful then we talk about pad level and we talk about blocking for yourself 15 you know, 15 attempts, 82 yards. What a great day he had last Saturday. Harness looking, looking, goes over the middle, throws, and picked off. Intercepted. Bowling Green is going to have outstanding field possession. Ball looked like it sailed a little bit. P.J. Mahoney with the pick. And Bowling Green in business at the NIU 21. Talk about a gift. This football should have never been thrown. Play action, gets his eyes around. A lot of time, good protection. The ball does float just a bit. But, it, but yet, I mean, with that defender that's in, in center field, the free safety, the football should have either been thrown away, okay, or thrown over his head. Poor throw there by Chandler. Totally unlike him. Jerry Kills talking a little bit about, about the throw. David, the, the, the wind should have not affected the football that much. That was Harness's first interception of the season. Bowling Green in business. Sheehan and company have it at the 21. On a first to 10, they're looking. They're in the air. Sheehan's gonna run the football. Across the 20, scoots out of bounds. Right around the 18, we'll see where they call it. They'll call it the 16 yard line. Credit to, credit to Bowling Green offensive line. Yet again, this is great pass protection. I mean, he has an, an awful lot of time. And then he steps up. The one thing in, in pass rush that you have to have 
is the ability to flush the quarterback with a push up the middle. When there's no push in the middle and he can step up when he's being rushed on the flanks, he's got a chance to get positive yardage just the way he did there. Second and five at the Northern Illinois 16 yard line. Empty backfield. Sheehan looks over at head coach Greg Brandon and his staff. Barks out a signal and he's gonna throw. Goes back the other way. And that one is going to be a loss on the play. Corey Partridge made the catch. Josh Allen came up and made the hit. He's still down, shaking up a bit. Hops up and he's going to come off the field. This is a play action pass, but basically what it amounts to is a, is, is a throwback. This is a designed play. He sets out one way, tries to get the defense moving in that direction, and throws the football back. Why that play was made by the defense was because of one thing, discipline. Discipline and keeping the football inside and in front of the defense. Very well coached defense. Third and six at the 17 yard line. Chris Bullock in it running back. They give it to Bullock. Tries the middle of the defense, makes a man miss, and I think he's got enough for a first down. See where they spot it, but I think he's got enough, and yes, he will. Move Low. the chains, first down Bowling Green. Low center of gravity, 5'11", 223 pound junior out of Dutchran, Louisiana. High school captain, honor roll student, great kid. When we talk about pad level, what I mean by pad level is when you get into the arms way with the football, you lower your shoulders. You've heard me say this time and again, David, you become your own blocker. Bullock again, tripped up and he'll lose a yard. Good penetration by the Northern Illinois defensive front. Now you're always talking as, as a defensive lineman. Create a new line of scrimmage. Create that heels depth of the offensive line and then get in there in pursuit. Alex Crush, Craig Rush, Mike Krause, Larry English. That's as good as a defensive front as you'll see in a lot of college football teams and better than most. All right, a second and 10 now at the 10 yard line. Second and goal just at the 10. There's the wide receiver screen, and again, it goes absolutely nowhere. Patrick George, number 33, up to make the hit. Basically, it's the same play we saw just a bit ago, just a play-action fake and a throwback pass. This is where I talk about discipline, staying in your lanes, knowing what the leverage is, and then the relentless pursuit. He falls down, watch the athleticism as he comes right back up, gets into the play, and makes the tackle. That's outstanding football play. That's what we call a want you guy. A guy that's going to get to the football regardless of what the situation is. It's a third and 11. Sheehan looking, pressured. Sheehan looking, evades a man, throws toward the end zone, and throws it out the back of the end zone. It will bring up a field goal try for Bowling Green, so Northern Illinois turns away BG from a touchdown with some solid defense when they handed him the ball in tremendous shape. All right, David, when you throw an interception like that, all the players on the side are yelling, sudden change, sudden change. In other words, defense is now alerted, come out, our offense have turned the football over. Three points after a sudden change, I give the victory to the Northern Illinois defense. Provided the field goal is good, and regardless of the field goal. Snap, set, field goal try is up, and it is absolutely perfect. Let's talk a little more about that sudden change sometime. By the way, first points given up against the opponent in the first quarter since September 6th for Northern Illinois versus Western Michigan. We'll tell you about the scoring drive when we come back. We're all locked up at three in the cal. College life is... All right, welcome back to DeKalb, tied at three. Here's our University Plaza drive summary. University Plaza, it's where to live. Seven plays, 10 yards, took 305. Sinisha Vervolo, a 29 yard field goal. 29 yard field goal into a very stiff win. Nice job, good leg strength. Oh yeah, that was that, that's easy, a 40 yarder with the way the wind well, is today. David, sudden change, I mentioned it before, you coach sudden change, you practice sudden change, whether it's the offensive side of the football or the defensive side of the football. A sudden change occurs when the defense comes off the field, the offense gives up the football, are you ready to come right back out and make a stand? If you're on the offensive side of the football and your defense gets the football for you, you know, sudden change, all right, can we get organized again? 
get out there and make a big play right out the gate. Sudden change is coach is critically important to the success of any football team. All right, a very short kick is going to roll, picked up by Miko Brown, and Miko Brown absolutely leveled at the 23-yard line by Roger Williams. Give him a lot of credit. That was one heck of a tackle. Well, anytime you tackle a, a, a player with the ability of Miko Brown, especially in the open field, but one of the things he did was he used the sideline. He used the sideline as his help. You always have to know how to leverage the sideline and where to go after the runner. You tack Miko Brown to the sideline side, he may still be running. You tack him to the field side, now he's got to push to the sideline. Miko Brown back in at tailback. He and Chad Spann will both see a ton of action today. Hand off Miko Brown up the middle. Knocked down at the 25-yard line after a gain of about two. David, are Antonio we ready for a Smith little bit of a fullback talk? My guy is not playing. Kyle Scarf, Kyle Scarf. In a, he's in a boot on the sideline. He's on the sideline, he's in street clothes. But in his place is Connor Flayhide from Notre Dame of Niles High School here in the, in the suburb, uh, suburban Chicago, Niles area. And I've watched this guy. He is also an excellent blocker. He's going to be fun to watch as the day progresses. Six feet tall, 240 pounds. Big dude. When I played football, he'd have been a guard. Connor Slayhack. You know, the Northern Antonio North, Smith up to knock Miko Brown down again, by the stay, way. Stay with the running game. Stay with the running game. I like it. Little shake right there, Miko. And, you know, I talk about, you know, a, a feet. You say, what does that mean? It means the ability to pat your feet quickly. Is If your feet stop and you're running back on contact, you have no chance. After that first contact, the yards you get after that is called hidden yardage. Great backs uh, have a lot of hidden yardage at the end of the day. It means that they beat the first defender basically by themselves. Harness. Going to throw the football, rolls, dumps it off, and that is going to be enough for Northern Illinois. First down, Brandon Field, the big fella. Made the catch, Jamal Brown made the tackle. Why the play goes? Because of the play action. You run the football successfully, you come out with the boot, ball's thrown in the right place. Now I tell a tight end after you catch the football, you're no longer a tight end. Right now you are a fullback. Yards after you catch. Tell a, tell a running back after you catch the football, you are now a wide receiver. Harnish calling out a play. Northern Illinois has a fresh set of downs. It's a 3-3 ball game. We're in the final minute of the first quarter. You got the direct snap, Justin Anderson. Marcus Perez takes the toss, and he is fenced in, and that one's going absolutely nowhere. Bob, why was that play blown up right from the start? A little trickery. Well, one of the things, what you do is call, it's recognition. You practice these plays. You take Northern Illinois plays, and these are called, this is a gimmick play right here. And you coach that outside linebacker, that defensive end, Briggs. You coach him to pick up keys when that play is being run. Now it takes discipline. Because any young guy, as soon as that ball goes in that direction, he wants to take off. He wants to pursue. But he stands backside, takes three steps, screen, reverse, bootleg, and now get into pursuit. All right. That will be the final play of the first quarter. Good quarter. 3-3. Three, three, Bowling Green and Northern Illinois. All right, on a day that they're going to honor the 1983 California Bowl team. Let's take a look at the stats from the first quarter for this year's club. Here we go from today, Bowling Green, 28 passing yards to just 11 for Northern Illinois. Rushing yards in Northern's favor, 30 to 20. Total yards, really not a huge difference there, Bob. And turnovers won Northern with the interception. Here, Harnish will pick up a couple of yards on second and 12. Predetermined quarterback draw. He's big enough. He can run the play. He's athletic enough. We look at the stats. They're totally indicative of the score of the football game. It couldn't be more even of a football game. Here he sets back, gets a look, gets a look, comes up field. Nice job over there by, by uh, I believe it was Jarrett Sanderson of disrupting that play coming across. Again, it's about analysis. That's why scout teams, the teams that demonstrate the plays of the other team, are so critically important. Ricky Kreider now in at tailback. So we're seeing a lot of different looks from Jerry Kill and company. 
Harness looking, looking, throws, and he's picked off. That will be the second interception of the day. May have been a miscommunication on the route. Kenny Lewis with the pick, but there may have been a miscommunication because it looked like he thought someone was coming back to the ball, and the receiver took off down the field. It was either that or it was a pump and go. Pat, uh, pat the feet and then get downfield for the long route. There, you're exactly right, David. This is a miscommunication. My goodness, pump the football, freeze him, now throw the football over the corner. He'd still be running into the end zone. Two, two plays like this uh, by uh, Harnish, a bit surprising for me. Bowling Green again, with good field possession, and this time they're going downwind. Well, they're a pure spread offense. Northern Illinois does run a, a, a part of the spread, but yet they go to a more traditional eye back set. Bowling Green does a nice job of executing this offense. Tyler Sheehan, the quarterback. Turner, the tailback. Sheehan looks, throws. That's tipped in the air and falls to the turf. It'll bring up a third and four. Marquise Parks was the intended target. Well, good ar a good show of arm strength here. Sets his feet, nice job. I mean, in, in reality, that football should have been caught. I, I, I don't buy that and that route, that quick slant of taking something off the football. You have to take the, something off the football here and there when you're dumping the ball. But on that quick slant, you're throwing that football. Time out. Good velocity. Bowling Green, that will be their first. We will take a timeout with them. 13.46 left. BG with a three, third and four. Coming up when we come back. Fresh. At Locked up in a good one. Northern Illinois' defense, Bob, very, very good. The most important statistic that we see is defense against the score. And they are number one in the Mid-American Conference and number 13 nationally. Credit Tracy Clays, the astute defensive coordinator who's been with Jerry Kill for seven years. Tracy Clays out of Kansas State. I've heard him speak at clinics. He does a magnificent job. They are ranked first in every category in the Mid-American Conference defensively with the exception of one. There you go, big third down situation. She is barking out the call at the line of scrimmage. Steps, three-step drop, finds his man, and he drops the football. And him wide open, Lewis Parks dropped the football, and that will bring up a fourth down. A little bit of looking upfield before you catch the football. You have to catch the football and bring it into your midsection before you take off with the football. You have to work on that. Pop your head down, make sure the ball's secure. Well-thrown football, should have been caught. Miko Brown, the deep man. Miko Brown will let that one bounce, and it is going to check up like a beautiful sand wedge and be down inside the one-yard line. David, you asked me the last time Miko Brown fair caught the football. This is difficult to do. You tell, in, in a win, you tell the, your punt returner, get your heels on the 10-yard line. If the ball goes over your head, let it go, unless the ball is kicked so high that in your periphery, you see defenders are coming behind you, then you field the football. I thought it was a good decision right there to let the football go because it did go inside the 10-yard line and none of the defenders were in his periphery. In other words, he didn't feel like someone could come behind him and field the football before it went into the end zone. All right, they're going to say it was touched at the three, but still, tremendous play for Bowling Green there. Chad Spann is the deep man. We'll get you a shot of the flags in a moment. It is a gusty one down there on the field. Hand off to Chad Spann, makes a man miss. Oh, nearly. Kept his balance, it falls down at the six yard line. Jamal Brown up to make the tackle. You know, I can't talk, talk enough about a fullback blocking. Connor Clay had. Take a look at the flags just gusting there in front of the Jeffrey and Kimberly Jordan Center, which they handle all athletic performance and academic support services. It's a gorgeous facility, but it is definitely a windy one. Second and seven, Bob, for Northern Illinois, Chandler Harness and Company and Bowling Green locked up 3-3. Average yards per play today for Northern Illinois, 3.7 for Bowling Green, just 2.6. Hand off the span, he picks his way and knocked down short of the 10-yard line. 
Michael Ream, Joe Schaefer, that side of the defensive line for Bowling Green gets an excellent push. It forces him to redirect. In other words, he has to cut back. While he's cutting back, taking time to do that, the linebackers stay at home without over-pursuing. They come up and make the play. Third and four. Call it, Coach. What would you call? Uh, you know, I might throw a little dump pass here. Just out into the flat. I talk about it as an elongated pitch. You throw the football yeah. at your own nine? Yes, I would. I, 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 have, I have more confidence in Harness than what he's exhibited today with his two interceptions. He's going to keep it. He will try and get a push. He will not get a first down. He is knocked backward. And Northern Illinois is going to have to punt the football into that tough win. So Bowling Green is going to get very good field position. You know, when you've shown this, this play two or three times early on in the half, it becomes easier to diagnose the play. Great pursuit by Bowling Green, great gang tackling. This is where you're going to tackle a guy up in his upper body as opposed to his legs. Tackling his legs, he's got the chance to lean forward and, and make the first down. Down there, you can tackle him in the upper body, drive your legs and take him back. Did better to punt out of his own end zone into that win, and it's going to hit and roll sideways out of bounds at the Northern Illinois 36-yard line. Right at the 36 is where Bowling Green will start, so they have been getting excellent field position. Credit their defense with the hold. Well, today with the, you know, the kicking game is so critically important to field position. These are basically right now at this point in time two evenly matched football teams on this given Saturday field position. The punt goes down to the three-yard line. Great field position. You hold them, you force them to punt. Yet again, great field position. Northern Illinois defense, we talked about where they rank. They've also done a wonderful job at points allowed per game. First and ten. That play will go maybe for a yard. Maybe. Anthony Turner knocked down by Tim McCarthy. Look at the Husky D, the last five games. Look at the numbers of points they've allowed. Defense against the score. I mean, and that is obvious. That's the one most important. Two teams have scored 13 points, and that's been the most production. And one of them being the University of Tennessee that Northern Illinois Huskies basically played, David, to the last uh, play of the football game. Was it 13 nine? In Knoxville. See it looking. Looking, dumps it off, finds his tail back, and he is blown up. You know, it's just a matter of time before we get a call Chase. by Larry English. Watch him pass rush here, split two defenders, forcing the quarterback out into the fight. Still a, a pretty good pass. And here's English. He's still in the play. He's still pursuing. How can you say enough things about this guy? In the pros, he may end up being a stand-up outside linebacker. Chase Carter came up, made the hit. It's a third and seven at the 33. <laughs> Snap, handoff, Turner. Turner it puts the ball on the ground. A flag flies. Rolls out of bounds at the 35-yard line. We'll see what the penalty is. That play really surprises me. You've got, you've got the wind at your back, a stiff wind. You've thrown the ball somewhat effectively. I don't understand the handoff to turn around that play. A bit too safe for me. I'm wondering if there's a face mask on Northern Illinois. They're pointing to the Huskies. David, we've had four games with these Mid-American Conference officials, and I'm continuously impressed. They were offset. The first foul is offside. Defense number 51. Second foul is holding number 75 on the offense. By rule, those penalties offset. Replay third down. So there you have it. Multiple penalties. Well, here's the inside handoff. Spread off, spread offense play to the outside. I don't understand it. And, and a good hand in there. I, David, I couldn't see who that was. It, it could have very well been. Is it Josh Allen? It was. Yes, it was. It was Josh Allen. Good call, David. Number nine, Josh Allen. He stuck his hand there, pushed the football out. So you know, that's what I understand. One put, one's a 15 or a 10-yard penalty. The other one's a five-yard penalty, but they offset each other. They wipe it out. It's a third and seven again, and we got a direct snap this time to the tailback. And he is going to pick up a first down. 
Turner rumbles for the first down. He comes up a little gimpy. He's going to come off the field, but he does his job on the direct snap. He takes off and picks up a much-needed Bowling Green first down. I mean, is football copycat or is football copycat? You know, all, all of it. it. All is Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I, the Husky, I mean, you watch anyone with a spread offense, don't line that tailback up there in the quarterback position and get that. Chris Bullock takes the handoff from Sheehan. Breaks an arm tackle, and he's tackled down the field after a gain of nearly eight yards. Big hit by Craig Rush. Senior out of Hilbert, Wisconsin, number 99. You know, Stayed with the play. Excellent. That was going to be my point, Dave. When those defensive linemen see that that ball has gone beyond linebacker depth, they turn around and run. You grade that. You grade effort. And, and you reward it. And up Bullock again. Bullock makes a man miss. Bounces off another man. Enough for a first down and sorry, inside the Northern Illinois 10. Jeff Fink, number 74, and Brandon Curtis, number 55. The right guard and right tackle, respectively, are playing an outstanding football game here. I mean, good pad level coming off the football. Brandon Curtis, 6'1". You know, we talk about fifth-year seniors. Those are two guys that have played side-by-side. And that is critically important. It's like you know, a baseball analogy. The second baseman and the shortstop. Always knowing where the other one's going to be when they have to make the And off Bullock again. Bullock dragging tacklers. And knocked down right around the two yard line. You know, Northern has, has shown a number of defensive fronts. I think they're going to have to start covering people a man for a man. There's just a little bit too much of a natural gap inside there. Bowling Green is getting too good of a push up front. Everybody wants to rip that football out, cause that fumble. It's a second down at the two yard line. She is going to keep it. She is going nowhere. And he is driven back. It'll be a loss of at least a yard on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. D.J. Perkle, I'm not the so big fellow, the sophomore out of Frankfurt, Illinois. Not so sh well, no, that was a designed play. All you had to do is watch the pullback. But look at the pursuit. Look at the pursuit. You want to see as many of those red jerseys around the football every time. You come up big defensively right there on second down and force them into a third down. And it builds. You build on that. You build on that pursuit. You coach that pursuit. You talk about that pursuit. Got Anthony Turner, single back set. See it. Going to toss it to Partridge. He's going to turn the corner and not get there. He is knocked down at the two-yard line. Brandon Bice came up and laid the lick on him. It will bring up fourth down. It's a field goal try. Well, here's a little bit of the gimmick. Just the, the corner coming around, the corner coming up. You mentioned Bryce. All he wants to do is get in pursuit, but no, he remains disciplined. He stays in his position and waits to see if the ball's going downfield opposite him or is it going to come back to him. Field goal try is up, and it is perfect. So Bowling Green takes the lead. Let's go to Jim Blaney with a special guest on the sideline. All right, thank you very much, David. I'm here with Coach Bill Mallory, who, of course, was honored today by Northern Illinois and was the coach of the 1983 California Bowl team, which, in talking to people around DeKalb, of all the football teams that have played here, the 83 California Bowl team seems to be the one everybody likes the best. Why is that? Well, it was a great group of young men. Uh, really, a tremendous amount of respect for them. Of course, they had a, a fine staff, and, uh, you know, I just think it was a group that was together, and uh, uh, as they've commented this weekend, as we've had a reunion, how well everybody got along. You've coached some big time teams over your career. So where does that one rank for you? Because let's face it, that was a, you came out here and you really had to rebuild the program and get it going. And that was really the yeah. payoff of all the hard well, work. just uh, come into the MAC. They had not been in the Mid-American Conference that long. And uh, so, uh, but uh, I always had a lot of respect for Northern. I, I had played them when I was coaching in at Miami, Ohio. And Doc Urich was in the head coach here. And I played for Doc in college under Air Procedure at Miami, Ohio. 
and but I think it was that time I became more aware of Northern as they came into the conference a little later on. I could see that that could be a darn good job uh, for somebody. Never ever thought that someday that I'd be the head football coach here. So, but uh, anyway, uh, I had a lot of respect for the school here, and uh, I just was very blessed to have the opportunity to be here and be a part of it all. Coach, welcome back. Thank you for Thank stopping you, by. Good to see you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, David, back to you. All right, class act, Bill Mallory. I was on the basketball staff here when that Cal Ball team went to the California Bowl and won it, and uh, he was always a class act to deal with, let me tell you. Let's take a look at the drive summary, the University Plaza drive summary. Ten plays, 34 yards, took almost five minutes. Sinisha Vervolo, the 20-yard field goal and it is six to three bowling greens falcons 10 plays defenses when they talk about goals they want to make sure that they do not give up a drive of 12 go, plays David. or more they gave up 10 plays on that drive and bowling green comes away with the field goal all right northern illinois going into the wind again chad span the tailback takes the handoff he is going to be dragged down for a loss Northern's getting no penetration up front right now, Bob. Jamal Brown, by the way, made the hit. Well, you see, just a little bit of a push. Now, kick to the outside, one man unaccounted for. When you see a quarterback come out on the field and point in one direction or point in the other direction, what he's basically saying is, where is, does the mismatch occur for us? Right there, they had that corner. He was not accounted for, excuse me, the outside linebacker. Could not be blocked. That's where the running back has to beat one man himself. Artis fakes, tosses, finds the big man again. His tight end diving, hustling, and it will be enough for a Northern Illinois first down, the big fella, Brandon Field. All right, play action, the boot action. In other words, starting out one way, coming back the other way. Okay. And this right here, again, I talk about a tight, a tight end. You, you're a fullback after you catch the football. One of the things that Harnish did well there, when you run that boot pass, you have to be able to make that first guy miss that's in your face or at least throw the football over his head. Excellent job by Harnish. Excellent execution and excellent presence in the flat. Harnish under center now. Eddie Adamski gives him the snap, and Harnish looks. Has some time, throws, finds his man. <laughs> that one will be, they may, we'll see where they spot it. Did he even gain a yard? Connor Lehigh, the fullback, made the catch. Big hit. P.J. Mahoney lit him up. I have to give Lehigh a lot of credit for hanging on to the football. This is one of these, hello. I mean, you turn around and there's good pursuit right there. Hang out to the football. Good job of securing the football. Goes back to the huddle and says, Chandler, I love you, but let's not do that again. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Second and nine. Harness. Play action, looking, throwing, and he misses his man. Looking for Marcus Perez. A little bit of an underthrow football. David, we had Bill Mallory uh, on a couple seconds ago, a couple minutes ago. Bill Mallory is one of the, Coach Bill Mallory, one of the true gentlemen that you will ever mention when you talk about coaches. He is a true gentleman. Not an ounce of an impropriety during his entire career with the NCAA, with the guys that played for him, love him. And when you talk about that, he and Doc Yurick played for a guy, a gentleman that I think is maybe one of the greatest college football coaches of all time, and that's the great era procedure at Miami of Ohio. Harness looking, looking. Now he's going to take off and run with the football, and Harness makes a man miss. Harness cuts it back inside the 50. Big game, Northern Illinois. We do have a flag on the play. I think it's going to be a clip, David, and it's going to go against the Huskies. You know, when a quarterback has good arm strength and basically runs a straight drop back or a spread type offense, we, we often do not speak of his athleticism. This young guy's a fine athlete. Now I think it's going to go against uh, uh, Bowling Green. You know, the Huskies are applauding, and they're right around there. We're not. I don't know what this official's saying. Harness seems to think it's going to go against Bowling Green. Bowling Green coaches thought it was going against Northern Illinois. What do we got here, David? Gets flushed, fi finds the open seam, tucks the football, puts it away, secures the football very well. 
that guy with the orange shirt out of the way, David. Exactly. exactly. We need to, he to needs move to know. Him over. He needs to know what we're doing up here. On the defense, number 44. That's a 10-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Results in a first down. That is a big play for Northern Illinois. Tack 10 more on the end of the run, and all of a sudden, the Huskies have their best field position of the day going into the win. Well, John Hanline, the outside linebacker, number 44, 6'2", 240 pounds, a big young guy and a fifth-year senior. You know what he's saying to himself? I've been around here five years. I'm better than that. Played for Chico Kyle, the legendary Chico Kyle, at Cleveland St. Ignatius High School. Doesn't come much better than that at the high school level. Brother Chris was an all mac linebacker at Bowling Green also. We saw him, uh, Handline hit himself on the, on the shoulder pads in the chest and saying, hey, that's on me. You know, that's on me. I was wrong. I'm a fifth year senior. I know better. Chad Spann cuts it back inside, makes him all miss, and a gang of white and orange come and find him. After a game, they'll call it four yards. You know, again, credit Bowling Green with excellent pursuit and also excellent, excellent discipline. We've got big Dan Keller turning around and sealing the inside, but no, good pursuit, people coming up from the secondary. Antonio Smith, a lot of people around the football. Bowling Green right now is playing true team defense. There's not one defender on that side of the football that's probably going to get uh, uh, more calls than any other. And team defense, team pursuit, inside and front. Harness fakes the span, looking, looking, going down the field, and it is knocked away. Underthrown ball. He that was looking for Willie Clark. P.J. Mahoney was there, the ball was underthrown. Well, this is a case, I think, David, of, of throwing the football into the wind, and the wind just getting, giving that little bit of a flutter. But again, P.J. Mahoney, you mentioned him, uh, excellent play, coming back to the football, making a good adjustment, but a little bit of that was on the wind. You know, a lot of times when you see the flags up high, uh, it, it may be, in, you know, indicative of the, obviously, the win. Uh, sometimes down on the field, it's, it, it's a little bit different. But you know what? That's an open end right there, David. And that win is coming from that end. With that open end, that has to be a pretty swift win right down at field level also. Span takes the handoff. Knocked down right at the 30-yard line. Set, span the ball. Now, at the 30 on fourth down, what do you do, Bob? Because a field goal here is minimum 47, and you've got to be tacking on what, 10, 12 yards with the win? I think the way I'm playing defense right now, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to take a chance offensively with, with moving the sticks. Fourth down and five yards. Let's go down to Jim Blaney and find out what the win's like. Guys, it's just absolutely howling down here, and a question about a field goal is if you're kicking it from the left hash mark where they are right now, you're essentially kicking it straight into the wind. Uh, Bob and David made a great point a second ago because that end of the stadium, and especially the southwest corner of the stadium, which is the bottom lower right hand of your screen, if you're watching at home, that's exactly where the wind is howling in from. It's picked up here during the course of the second quarter. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy. We're going to take a timeout. Northern Illinois is going to talk about it. 2.28 to go in the third. What will they do? Fort down. Coming up. Fans' best friend. 6 3, Falcons over Huskies. A fourth down coming up. We'll see what the Huskies are going to do coming up at the half. It's our Fatty's Pub and Grill halftime show. Fatty's is the official pre and post game tailgate place of NIU football. One on one with the basketball coach here, the very fine Ricardo Patton. Stats, highlights, and more analysis from Bob Kamel. Northern Illinois goes for it. Harness cuts it back. He's going to have a first down. Knocked down inside a 25. Move the chains. First down, Northern Illinois. All right, you're talking about a redshirt freshman quarterback. But understand this. The more reps he gets, the better he sees the field. Excellent job here. Rolls to his right. Everybody's covered. Tucks the football away. Knows just when to do it. Secures the football. Knows what it takes to move the sticks. First down. Here he goes. Cut back. Put the football away. I'm a running back right now. Another dimension to the offense. You Excellent see the block. Joe Schaefer, number 40. D lineman came in, and who got him? 
Weiss, two blocks, Jason Anye Buagu. Chad Spann knocked down at the 20. I will tell you, I have to look at my sheet here, David. Rob Reeves is the running back coach at Northern Illinois. He is the running back coach. And I'll tell you one thing Rob Reeves has done an excellent job of, and that is teaching these fullbacks to block. Connor Flayhive, yet again, a good stick, good body position, brought his legs. I was a little worried with Scar being out there. What, uh, you know, what, what could the Huskies come up with? I don't think they've lost too much in the transition, although, you know, young Scar, like, you know, he's my rock'em, sock'em guy. Maybe at the end of the game. There's Connor right there. There he is right there. No, that's no, it's not They just showed Connor a moment ago. Another fullback I like watching. Harness looking, looking. Now he tucks it into the run. Makes a man miss, breaks a tackle, and knocked out right around the eight yard line, and a flag flies. It's probably going to be a hold coming up on Northern Illinois. We will see. We will find out. Block below the waist is what they may be calling, is what our phenomenal crew in the truck is telling us. Let's see if we can see. On the offense against players number 28 and 88. That's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Span and Beal. Why? Because the defender is engaged. If he's engaged, if the first blocker has him and he's handling him, you cannot come in and chop him. And that's the old high-low deal. I like the call. I like that penalty. Keep guys off a of guy's legs. He is defenseless in that situation. When the first, uh, when the offensive lineman engages him on contact, and then the back comes and takes his legs out from him. Right, second and 23 now. Big change in field position. Harness looking, looking, gonna dump it and throw it away into the van. That one actually almost went into a tuba. Into a tuba. You watch the end of that. The ball nearly got lodged in a tuba. He, he ran out of playing field here. He rolled out and rolled out. The slower the rollout, the more time he takes, the more opportunity. Watch where it, it goes. Now watch it bounce. It, it, off the bounce, it came right up at that guy's what, what, what do you play uh, when you play baseball? Bounce and fly? Either it goes into tube or it doesn't go. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Timeout, Time Bowling Green. I think that's going to be their final one. 56.3 seconds to go. Third and 23 coming up. We'll be right back on Comcast Sportsnet. Imagine. You're rooting for six to three. GMC dealer today. At Miami. Six to three. Falcons over Huskies. David Kaplan, Bob Kamel, Jim Blaney with you. You know, folks, we're sitting up where we check some of the other scores. Coach Kamel is. You're rooting for all your buddies around the game, aren't you? And why shouldn't I? Billy Lynch coached with me here at Northern Jared Illinois. Indiana, I coached at Northwestern. I like Northwestern, but Billy Lynch and I, we coached together here at Northern Illinois under Coach Corso. Well, I'm a friend of Pat Fitzgerald, so I'm rooting for them and they lost. Harness dragged down short of the 30-yard line. He was hit by Dyrell Briggs, 6'3", 232, a senior out of Mount Elfie, Ohio, and that was a Healthy tackle. One of the things, if you're uh, down the road, teams that Northern's going to play, they are going to have to account for Harnish. We've seen him four times, David. This is the fourth time. We have not seen him run with the football the way he has today. That added dimension will wreak havoc on a defense. Defenses that are about to play Northern Illinois in the next three or four games down the road, they're going to take one of their scout team players, a guy that can run with, not maybe not necessarily a fullback, and he's going to emulate Harnish the entire week. Now the clock is down to 10 seconds. If you're Northern Illinois, what do you do? Take a timeout at about seven and run one play into the end zone? Exactly. Actually, 7.4. That's when you take That's it. Right. <laughs> you know, we asked about, you know, you asked me about Northern Illinois with, you know, uh, uh, fourth down on the 30-yard line. There was two minutes and 28 seconds left on the clock. Toledo at, excuse me, Bowling Green at that time had one timeout left. 
Two minutes, 28 seconds, one timeout. You don't get the first down. They have to go 70 yards with one timeout in their back pocket. They do that, shake hands with them, nice play, see in the second half. It was a great call by Jerry Kill, but it was the only call as far as I was concerned. There is Salerno warming up the leg, but you can't believe you're going to try the field goal? No way from this distance. You're looking at 33. It's a 50 yarder minimum. They're going to try it. 50 yarder into the wind. David, I, I was with you on that call, though. I'd throw one up into the end zone. I would take the Hail Mary putt. We'll find out. Salerno. From 50 plus, when you count the win, no doubt about it, the boot is up and it is no good. That football started out end over end. It caught that wind and went like a helicopter making a left hand turn. All right, that one, I, I don't think if he had been able to keep it straight if he would have made it. There's just too much of a gust into his face there. But worth the try, he's got a strong leg. We have played two quarters of football. Northern Illinois trailing the Bowling Green Falcons 6-3 to three to honor the 83 Cal Ball Championship team. Here at the half, Jim Blaney will have an interview for us and we'll also have some stats and some highlights, so a lot coming up on a windy, chilly, but sunny day in DeKalb, Illinois, about an hour west of downtown Chicago on the campus of Northern Illinois University. You didn't mention, David, the 83 team being honored. We came here in 84 as a coaching staff. We inherited some outstanding young men who were outstanding football players, and many of whom are on the field right now going to right, be honored. To Jim Blaney with Jerry Kill. Thank you, David, very much. How fortunate do you feel, Jerry, that your team turned it over twice, you're only down three at the half? Well, we're very fortunate, you know, and uh, field position has been a big key in the game, and the win's been a factor, and, and Bowling Green's playing very good defense, and so are we. So it's going to come down to uh, who doesn't turn over the ball in the second half and who can make a play and, and maintain field position. Good luck on the second half, Jerry. David, back to you. All right, thank you, Jim Blaney. So we'll see what they can cook up at the half. Everyone will try and warm up and get ready. We've got halftime festivities coming up. It's the Patty's Pub and Grill Halftime Show after this at Comcast Sports. The sun goes down. At least that's what everybody's hoping for. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jim. David Kaplan, Bob Kamel up here in the booth. And we have a special guest with us, Garrett Wolf of the Chicago <laughs> Bears. And I can't tell you what a pleasure it was to call your games your whole career here. You have gave us a lot of thrills. It was definitely a pleasure to play here. And that was a, an experience that I've always enjoyed, and thinking back on it, you know, I had a lot of good times here at Northern Illinois University. When you look back at what you did, was there something that stands? I remember going to Muncie, Indiana, <laughs> and calling your game, and you ran for I don't know how many hundreds of yards. A lot. Which one? Did, a lot. Which it one jumps out? Well, I, I think the Silicon Valley Bowl uh, really jumps out the most because you know, it was the first time we had been to a bowl, I think, in 21 years, and. You know, to go out there and win that game and under those conditions, you know, it, it was a great opportunity for us and it was an opportunity we took, took advantage of. How about the last time Bowling Green had to <laughs> deal with Garrett Wolf in this stadium four years ago? Yeah, it, it was pretty bad for them that night. I think it was uh, about 202 yards and uh, three touchdowns in the second half. And, you know, it was when everything really started for me. It was when my opportunity began and, and I was able to play well and, and really put myself in a great situation for my career. Shocking, you remember the numbers exactly <laughs> right. I remember all my numbers from my career here. And uh, no, the one thing about Northern Illinois, I had a, a great group of teammates. And I was just talking with the women's basketball coach a second ago. And, you know, when I was here, I never felt alone. I always had a, a great support system. And I had a great group of people around me at all times. And, you know, this day and age, that's something that, you know, people can can go unnoticed with people, you know, when they don't have a good support system and a group of people around them that want them to do well. And that's what I had here, from all the way down from administration to the student athletes. Everyone wanted me to do well. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be able to make my student athletes proud. You know, you, I, I said this to you off camera, and I don't say this lightly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a credit to this university, you're a credit to college athletics, and you're a credit to the city of Chicago. You're a very special young man. Thank you. Thank now, you with that much. being said, from the bottom of my heart, <laughs> every time a young guy dots the eye here mm -hmm. and is a tailback and carries the football, he's going to be compared to someone, mm -hmm. and it's going to probably be you. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Miko Brown? I like him. Uh, I've had the opportunity to watch a couple games this year. You know, 
one thing that jumps out, we're very comparable in size. And, you know, that's going to draw comparisons from, from here on out. But you know, the one thing I, I would give them advice is to, is to not try to do what I did. It's just to play football. Because when I was playing here, you know, I, I played behind Michael Turner. And you know, when I played as the starting running back, I never tried to do anything that Michael did. I just wanted to play and be myself and, and be a good football player. I never compared myself to Michael. I never, you know, went out to go break any of his records. It just sort of happened. And, you know, you can't apply that pressure to yourself, and you just have to let things come. All right, a downwind kick goes through the back of the end zone. Northern Illinois will start first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Last week, you picked up a touchdown <laughs> as a member of the Chicago Bears on special teams. What was that like when the ball Last week, up? I stole a touchdown is what <laughs> happened. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't have asked for a better situation. They kicked, the punter tried to kick the ball again. It bounced right up into my lap. Man. The last time I saw a daylight like that was running up this sideline against Buffalo. I remember running into the gate down here at the end. But it, it, was a, it was a great opportunity for me. Miko Brown breaks tackles, rips off a gain of nearly 12. An advantage that I think Miko has that I didn't have. Miko right now is bigger than I was in my entire career. I probably was about 170 pounds the whole time I was here. And, you know, he's bigger as far as weight-wise, but I'd, I'd like to think I'm probably a lot faster than he was. But he it, has stood out as a very talented football player, and he'll continue to get better because he's still very young, very young. One of the things we talk about running back is patience. Mm -hmm. He exhibits a lot of patience for a young running back. Most guys zing want to take the ball, get up field, he'll pat his feet, look for that lateral crease, and then mm -hmm. burst it and take it. Is that something natural? Is that something that coaches work with you? Well, I think that's something that's natural, but it's something that can definitely be enhanced. You know, the better you understand the blocking scheme and the better you understand what's going on in front of you, the better you'll become. And, you know, with him being start, with him starting now as a freshman, that just gives him you know, an edge on everything from here on out because he'll be in the same offensive system for four years. He'll know the same guys that are blocking for him. And by the time it's done, he'll know where everyone's blocking. He'll know what the receivers have and what the tight end has. And that's something I benefited from my junior and senior year. Harness looks, dumps, finds his big tight end, Brandon Beal. And I believe he will have enough to move the sticks for another Northern Illinois first down. Now, the head coach you play for now, mm -hmm. very similar to the head coach you played for here in Joe Novak, Lovey and Joe, same type personalities. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Both of them are very kind, courteous, and very respectful men. And you know, both, both of them are soft-spoken. Coach Novak's a little more old-fashioned than <laughs> Coach Smith is, but both of them are very passionate about the game, and they, you know, they express that through their players and, and through their actions. Now, there are some people that watch football coaches, and they think it's all blood and guts, grab you by the face mask. These no. two guys don't no. do that. No. How do they get their point across if they're upset about something? Well, Coach Novak, with him being so old-fashioned, you could always kind of tell. You know, you never wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Coach Novak. You never wanted for him to have to challenge you because, it, you know, when he got to the point where he had to challenge the team, you know, it, it was going to get guys fired up. And with Coach Smith, Coach Smith, it, it's kind of funny because he never raises his voice. And you can just tell that he's very passionate about what he talks about because of you can just see it in his body language. But he never raises his voice. He never yells, uh, ne never uses profanity. And it's different, but, you know, it's something you can respect in being an adult. We're talking with Garrett Wolf, former standout at Northern Illinois, now doing great work for the Chicago Bears. Chandler Harnish makes a man miss, dragged down across the 50-yard line on a second and eight play. It's got to feel good by week when you come back and <laughs> just get to hang out a little bit, just a couple days and then the body heal. Yeah, that's the one thing I was talking about. I've never gotten the opportunity to see the game from this from this area, you know, and, and seeing that facility over there. It, they got it bad. You know, these kids are spoiled. <laughs> they have no idea. You know, I remember running these ramps. I remember going up to see the coaches, all, to going up to the coaches' office and walking up a dark ramp. We didn't have stairs. We didn't have the sun shining in the building. So. It's a great situation for these kids here, and I think they're making the most out of it. it and really, that Jordan facility takes the program to a whole nother level. Whole nother level. It, it's a beautiful facility, and uh, it, it was it was definitely needed here. Miko Brown cuts it back inside. 
we'll see where they spot this if he picked up the first down. It's going to be very, very close. It is close. You know, we talk about backs being, you know, complete running backs, catching the football. I've watched you with the Bears. You're dealing with some really big people up front, mm -hmm. but yet you're an effective blocker. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you, you, you block within yourself, within your mm -hmm. size, so to speak, and your abilities, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you've been very effective. That, that really has to be very important for your coaches. Well, that's something that I learned here at Northern Illinois. When I got here, I didn't want to block at all. You know, I, I didn't want to block anybody, but it became you know, stress to me that if you don't block, you can't play. And the one thing you want to do is have Coach Novak pull you off the field for not being able to block. And it was something that I was forced to do. And, and through time, I was able to become good at it. You are good at it. And you are courageous. <laughs> I've seen the size of those guys. First but luckily, I don't have to block for anything longer than five seconds. First down, Northern Illinois. Before we let you go, I was reading a story back when we were doing your games, mm -hmm. and you were at Fenwick first and then at Holy Cross, mm -hmm. and you took multiple buses to get yeah. to school. It was an hour and a half each mm -hmm. way. He talked, Bob Kamel talked about want to. Mm -hmm. To put that type of effort in, that's want to. Yes, Talk about what to. it was like. Those bus rides, I remember like it was yesterday. Uh, no, I wanted a better opportunity for myself. And the good thing about it is I wanted it, but my family wanted it for me. And I talked about support system. I've always had great people around me that if, if the days that I didn't want to get it done, they made sure I got it done. And you know, having my, both of my parents in the household with me growing up and coming to Northern Illinois and having a whole host of parents. And what I mean by that is the administration here. I have, I've always had people that wanted it for me as well. Even though I wanted it for myself, they wanted me to do well. And I think that has made me the success story that I am thus far. Well, congratulations. You've always been a class act to deal with, Thank and you. I had a lot of fun calling a lot of touchdowns. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Well, good luck to you. Enjoy the rest of your bye week, and then uh, see if you can get the Bears to the Super Bowl. <laughs> All right. All the best to you. Thank you. Thank you. That is former All-American Garrett Wolf. Uh, one of our favorites that we've ever called games for here at Comcast Sports Net. We will have another guest joining us in a moment. Tim Terrell, the quarterback on the 83 Cal Bowl team. David, I, I, you know, I, I mentioned that off the camera. I mentioned it to him on, on camera that this is an impressive, he is an impressive young man. He is. Well-spoken and, you know, teammate first. The first thing he talked about were his teammates and the support system he had here and everything else. I remember doing an interview with him, and I said, well, how many 200, 250 yard games are you going to have? He says, many's the line will allow me to get. I thought, there's a guy that gets it right away. Harnish fakes, looks, cuts it back up, dives across the 35, move the sticks. That is another Northern Illinois first down. So they will re rack it first and 10 at the 34. You know, he has great instincts as to when to take off with the football. Pull it down, get off with the football. Right here, everybody's covered. Where do I go? Where's that opening? How do I take off with the ball? What does it take to move the sticks? You know, we talk about a bet in, ba in basketball. Uh, wh know where you're at on the floor. It's the same thing in football, David. Know what it takes to move those sticks. He is evolving today as a quarterback with just a multiplicity of abilities. He's throwing the ball well. I mean, he had the, the couple interceptions, the ball fluttered in that. But I'm very impressed by his running ability and his athleticism. Here's a quarterback draw yet again. Harnish makes a couple men miss and rips off a gain of nearly eight yards. David, he is six feet two inches tall, 210 pounds, and he's a red, red shirt freshman. He's going to get bigger. This is a play by design. You get a hat on a hat. In other words, an offensive lineman on a defensive player, and then let Harnish make the cuts off the blocks that he sees. Well, Dan Keller, 6'6 six, six and 295. Threw a nice big block in there, and that let him pick up a couple, three more yards. As did Trevor Olson, number 62. I mean, these are big guys that are coming off the football. They pass block effectively. They run block effectively. Again, very well coached. Chad Spann takes the handoff, cuts it back, and that will be enough for another Northern Illinois first down. I'll uh, have the ball just short of the 20-yard line. So Northern with a good drive here. Clock ticking now at 8.56. You know, talk about a luxury from an offensive standpoint. You have the running backs that Coach Kill can call upon, play in and play out. Different style, yet, you know, the same, you know, the same result. Span right inside there, goes to the outside, comes back into the inside. And I'll tell you something, P.J. Mahoney, nice tackle there. I wouldn't want to be looking Span in the, uh, in the eye in the open field. He really brings it. That is the fifth first down on this drive for Northern Illinois. And a timeout, Harnish 
says we're going to take a break. The 8.30 mark, first and 10 Northern Illinois. That's their first time out of the second half. We'll be right back at Comcast Sportsnet. Advantage. 8.30 to go, first and 10 Huskies when we put the ball back in play. By the way, how about Miami of Ohio today? They are trailing Kent State by 40. 47 7. It's a bit of a surprise to me, David. I thought Miami of Ohio would come out, you know, come out and have a, a, an excellent year this year, and they have been struggling. They've been plagued with injuries, uh, but at the same time, it's, it, it, that's, that's all really surprises me. Harness gives it the span, and he will be dragged down, no gain, might have lost. Yes, they will say a loss of a couple of yards on the play. Adrian Baker roared up and made the tackle. This is this right, right there. What we see is, is penetration by by the defense. A little bit of a stunt, a little bit of a twist. Baker comes up, comes up big on the play. Continues to pursue. Reach out, get a piece of the ball here. Just slow him down just a little bit and let Davis and the rest of that pursuit come through. This is a huge series, uh, David, for Northern. They have to come away this time with points. Second and 13 at the Bowling Green 25-yard line. Chandler Harnish. Again, here's the quarterback keeper. He makes a man miss, cuts it back up inside, and he's belted right near the first down marker. But what, what happens here is they begin to defend the pass. They see him come back with the down and distance the situation. They have a defense to defend the pass. He comes back with the quarterback draw. They get a hat on a hat, a man on a man, and he makes his cut off of the block. Well, you know who made the great block at the end of the run? Chad Spann down the field. And Harness turned to the crowd and said, let's go, get into it. It was so electric here last week with Toledo, you could tell. Everyone remembered the 70 to 21 score two seasons ago. I have not seen a Northern Illinois running back, whether it be a tailback or a fullback, show any shyness when it comes to blocking and the blocking assignment that they had. Those are complete running backs. Span makes a man miss, knocked down. I think he tripped over Eddie Adamski, the center. Otherwise, he's in the end zone. Mahoney made the tackle, but moved the sticks. It'll be a first and goal situation now for Northern good, Illinois, and the ball will rest at the eight yard line. Now, Eddie Adamski starts out, obviously, at, at, at the line of scrimmage. The ball is snapped. He comes off the football, takes care of the first assignment, then gets out, in, out into space, goes to look for a linebacker. Great second effort. Eddie Adamski will play on Sunday. Trust me, David. 6'3", 280 pound junior. First and goal at the eight. Span, and he will go nowhere. Dragged down from behind, Joe Schaefer roared up and read that play beautifully. Joe Schaefer out of Parma Heights, Ohio School, Benedict, a, a very, very active young guy. Good analysis here, comes right through. Great job, a lot, you know, there comes that point in time where you say, do I take the gap and go right now or is the ball gonna end up outside on the perimeter, uh, outside of contain, okay, or do I, or do I sit here? Instincts tell those linebackers and guys at down linemen, when do I take that gap, when do I go? When do I have backside responsibility? Harness gonna keep, Harness cuts it back, dives, did he get in? No signal yet from the officials, did he get in? I don't think he did. They shot the cannon off. I don't believe he got in. He didn't get in. The ball basically. Oh, here, watch number 85 right here, Matt Simon. Watch Matt Simon. There it is right there. Look at that block. Look at him engage the defender and take him back. Now, we talk about running backs being complete running backs. If you want to be a complete wide receiver, you have to be able to block. Matt Simon, my hat's off to you on that play. Excellent job of well, a wide receiver the, going down play. The gunner on the cannon jumped the gun just a bit. Span picking his way, driving. Is he in? Yes, he is. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. First touchdown of the ball game. And the Huskies hit pay dirt. It's 9-6 with a PAT coming up. You talk about team football, you talk about running backs blocking, you talk about fullbacks blocking, you talk about wide receivers blocking. You've got 11 people on the same page, you're gonna be successful. Hello, Connor Flayhide, bam -o. 
Nice block, young man. Good pad level. You know when I talk about that? That good lean, that good lean and keep your legs going. Excellent drive, David. Chad Spann's fifth rushing TD of the year. We'll show you the blocking up front again because the big fella, Jason Anye Buagu. Big presence inside the Huskies. 10-6, special guest when we come back. Celtics in HD, Friday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans' best friends. All right, welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois, on the campus of Northern Illinois University. Last week, Chad Spann found the end zone. The Huskies able to score through the air and on the ground. That was Marcus Perez on a really nice throw. And then there's the tight end making a catch. And then you'll see... Span hit pay dirt, and that one's today. Take a look at our University Plaza scoring drive. University Plaza, it's where to live. Span does the honors on the one yard rushing TD. 17 play drive, 80 yards, and took 10.06 off the clock. And Salerno will boot it away. We'll get back to action with the Huskies leading Bowling Green now. 10 6 after going into the win with a very solid drive. A very short kick. Fair caught right at the 31 yard line. And we'd like to welcome Tim Terrell to the booth, quarterback of the 83 Cal Bowl team and longtime NFL standout. How's it feel to be back on campus, big boy? It feels phenomenal. It's just a pleasure to be back here. And it's uh, as we walked on the field at 25 years, it's. I know everyone says it, but it is hard to believe that it's been that long. It's, it seems like uh, just a few years ago. How long in the NFL? I know you were playing for a few different teams. Well, somebody told me I played seven years. I remember about three of them. <laughs> I was knocked out uh, just about uh, every other play on special teams. Yeah, it was a special. I ended up coming, leaving Northern. Um, uh, as obviously as a quarterback and, and 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 got an opportunity with Dallas, Seattle, and Green Bay as, a, as they wanted to try me as a strong safety. The Falcons came around and said we want to try you as a fullback. And I knew they were, their special teams they were kind of high on that type of thing and I thought my shot was going to be as a special teams guy and went there and fooled a few people including kind of myself. I when, I when I did finally make it I was released the last day they called me back and then my career kind of began from there. And had a nice long run. It was, it was uh, as Garrett said, it was. A, I think I heard him say it was a dream come true, and it really, it really was. It was a dream come true. As you, a quarterback, watch the spread offense, and you think of the days that would coach Mallory's offense, basically three yards in a cloud of dust through the football here and there. You have to say to yourself, this is really interesting football with with the spreads that we see all over the country. How do you feel about that? How you know the, the change in football? Will it come back to the days of the offenses that you played in? Um, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, there's. Uh, uh, I don't know if it was simply a little bit simpler when we played, but uh, um, our offense was kind of geared towards me when, when I played. Uh, I, I was a sprint out guy. I wasn't a straight drop back guy. Um, I, I had three options. We ran a lot of options, so it was uh, it was uh, a sprint out, play action. Tim, if it's not there, take it and run. And and I was funny. Buck and I, Buck Sewer and I, my, my coach was looking at the stats yesterday at one of the games and. And I was looking at the stats and said, leading rush of Terrell, 19 for, you know, 19 carries, 98 yards. And uh, and <laughs> I, was, I just thought it was kind of funny. I was almost like a running back when we played. I threw kind of like a running back, too. I've been told. And finally, this one blown up at the line. The handoff to Anthony Turner. And I think it was Josh Allen that came up along with DJ Perkle, number 98. And blew this play up right at the get-go. You no, know, uh, 1983, seven of your teammates, seven, as well as yourself, drafted into the National Football League. 19 players from that football team played on NFL rosters. That is a phenomenal testimony to the type of players Coach Mallory brought in here. Yeah, uh, uh, Coach Mallory was just uh, the most inspirational person not only in my life but I think if you asked everyone on that team that in their lives as well um, really unexplainable to the impact that he's had in all our lives Vince Scott uh, had, our kicker had the opportunity to get up and speak yesterday and uh, and made the comment that you know when he goes through his day in his life 
uh, the decisions that he makes. Um, he's like, and, and, it's, and I know it sounds kind of funny, but it's like, what would Coach Mallory do or, or want you to do? And it's that kind of respect we had for the guy. Uh, you never wanted to let him down. Big third down play here, Tim. Third and three at the 37. She completes the pass. Real nice read, real nice throw to Jimmy Scheidler, the big tight end out of Indy. And that will move the sticks first down. Bowling Green, now you mentioned what would Coach Mallory do? John McDougal, the basketball coach, who I consider my second father, he was, I was his assistant. There isn't a day go by that I don't go, I gotta make a decision. What would McDougal expect me to do here? Exactly. It's just the respect factor that you have for that person. I, and I remember Coach McDougal, and you're right, what a phenomenal guy. We were, we were, uh, we had the opportunity to be around some, some really great people at Northern, and, uh, and boy, getting Coach killed, uh, uh, you know, what, I've had the opportunity to talk with them on many occasions, and Wow, you've got a first-class person there. And the facilities. How about the Jordan Center? Just the way the facilities have changed. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to even describe it. I, again, I heard Garrett talking about it. And uh, in the NFL, you know, a lot of these guys are complaining about uh, these current players. All they want is these current people to realize that there was someone else helped build that. Uh, before them. Yeah, before them. And uh, Joe did a phenomenal job. Joe Novak. Of building a program here. She enforced, looking, evades English. He's buying time, looking, looking, goes down the field in the end zone. Touchdown, touchdown, Bowling Green. Marquise Parks makes the catch. Credit Tyler Sheehan with a real nice job. Well, this is a case of, of a quarterback being flushed into the flat, having a lot of time, and there is no contain. You have to contain him. He's athletic enough. Watch, start out one way, he's going to come back to his right. Nothing there. Now he's buying time. And the great thing about the wide receivers in this play is that they mirror him as he scrambles. They move along with him. You see the both of them right there? That's why that play was successful. You can't sit. You have to mirror the quarterback when he starts to scramble and give him an open window. Excellent play, excellent execution, albeit of basically a broken play. All right, Sanisha Vervolo bangs through the PAT, and Bowling Green back on top. We'll continue after this. Don't miss a thing life has to offer. The Hauser Ross Eye Institute offers a number of options to help you see better. LASIK is just one of a number of choices from Hauser Ross. New lens technology can help you see near, far, and everything in between. Beyond contacts, beyond LASIK, new lens technology offers an exciting choice in vision correction. Leave it to the experienced doctors of Hauser Ross to have the best choices for your vision. See all that life has to offer at the Hauser Ross Eye Institute in Sycamore. All right, welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. A buck 13 left third quarter. And BG has taken the lead over Northern Illinois. 13-10 on a Sheehan 12-yard TD, excuse me, 12th TD pass of the year. Did a real nice job rolling, buying time, evading Larry English, and then uh, finding Parks in the back of the end zone on an 18-yard reception. It's our University Plaza scoring drive. Eight plays, 69 yards off the fair catch on the kickoff. And Sheehan with the touchdown toss. David Kaplan, Bob Kamel, Jim Blaney patrolling the sideline. And Tim Terrell, who was the quarterback, or I guess you could say he lined up under center, was the running back on the 83 team. You always led the team in carries. <laughs> it seemed like, it. again, I had the opportunity. Uh, I, I honestly didn't throw a lot of interceptions because I tuck it and ran. Right. They, and they, they were fine with that. And I was fine with it as, too, as well. That's where I was recruited out of my junior college. I got nine offers as a defensive back and only three as a QB. Then into the pros, same thing. They wanted me as a DB. The kick downwind will be halfway into the end zone, and it will be downed right there. Miko Brown says to Ricky Kreider, no chance. Here we talked about the win. What gave 
Bowling Green, the great field position they had. That kickoff, I mean, it's uh, that ball was kicked hard up in the air and basically stopped. Hit a wall. Hit a wall and dropped down. Gave Bowling Green great field position. They took advantage of it. Now, Northern Illinois is going to be going into the wind here for another minute and 13 seconds. Okay. After that, they will have the wind at their back. It will be a factor, David, in the, in, by the time. So let me ask you something over. then, Bob. Tim, do you guys run the football and then let the clock run as much as you can so you can get the wind, or do you try and throw the football? What do you do here? Well, I'm going I'm to run the football initially, and if I do throw it, I'm not going to throw it downfield. I'm going to a little dink pass here and there. And, you know, I think the, the question's going to be answered here rather quickly, David, because right now we're just, just at about a minute. I don't think we'll get uh, perhaps one more playoff before the, uh, they do have the advantage with the win. But I'm going to run the football. And if I am going to throw it again, I'm going to throw a little short pass, a dink pass. I'm not going to try the football, throw it into the teeth of this win because that's when we see that football flutter and uh, become an errant throw. The second and four. Tim, when you look back on 1983, can you believe how many years it's been? I can't. It's it's just unbelievable. It seems like this was sooner than uh, when we played in the pros. Oh, here's a nice one by this kid. Harnish ducks out of bounds. And that will move the sticks. Yeah, 25 years ago. And a big block again by my guy. Jason Anye Buagu. I mean, he is just a man up front. This is a big, big first down. I mean, in, in the great, in, as we progress into the fourth quarter, they needed this first down here and to continue to keep the drive alive. Just move the sticks, move the sticks. You're going to have the win at your back. Basically, with the, with the next play, Jason will be, uh, go ahead, Anye Buago. Buago, yet another great effort. When we come back, I want to ask Tim about the size of the offensive line. And Miko Brown picks his way for about four. That will be the final play of the quarter. But when we come back, I want to ask you about the size of the old lineman today versus when you were playing. A little different in the college game. we got to take a timeout. Fourth quarter coming up. The Falcons lead the Huskies by three. Husky fans, Fatty's Pub & Grill in DeKalb is your official pre- and post-game NIU football headquarters. Whether you're catching a game on our big screens or having some of our famous grilled food out in our beer garden, Fatty's is the place to be. Reserve your date for your holiday party at Fatty's. And if you're looking for catering for your next event, Fatty's also offers full service on and off-site catering. For more information, go to fattyspub.com or call 815-758-7737. Maybe your own price, huh? Yeah, they want 200 for a four-star on the Vegas Strip. I'm going 190. Oh, you wuss. What? Go lower. 160? Namby pamby. 99. Now you're negotiating. At Priceline, find half-price hotels every day. Save up to half off Expedia's best price and Hotels.com's best price on over 16,000 hotels. Find half-price hotels every day at Priceline. You can't tap. You have to drive over to Oak Brook Toyota in Westmont. It's Bob Barebones Bonanza. 11 Toyotas with zero APR now, including high mileage models like 32 MPG 09 Camry and the 35 MPG 09 Corolla. Bob Roarman. Nobody beats Bob. Nobody. Bob Roarman's Oak Brook Toyota in Westmont, five minutes west of the Tri-State on Ogden Avenue. All right, we are ready to start quarter number four. 13-10, Bowling Green leads the Northern Illinois Huskies on a second and six at the 42 of the Huskies. Chandler Harnish at quarterback, Miko Brown, the single set. Harnish looking, going down the field, looking for Landy Cox and nearly intercepted. It was dropped by Kenny Lewis. You know, David, just a little bit of a play-action fake here. Look one way, came back with the football the other way. I, in all candor, David, I'm not real crazy about this call. At this point in time, you're running the football effectively. You struggle a little bit with the deep ball, uh, albeit uh, I'm going to continue to stay in that rhythm, running the football, and then and then take that shot. But I, I want to, you know, I want to get into something here with the with the wind at my back, albeit before I start to throw the football downfield. They're going to run the quarterback keeper again. He bounces it in, and we'll see where they spot this. It's going to be close. I think he's going to be just a hair short. Let's see where the spot is. 
stats from the third quarter. There you have passing yards for both teams, not a factor. Rushing yards, Northern Illinois, 173. There's total yards, first downs in Northern Illinois' favor, and time of possession now starting to become a factor. 27 minutes nearly to 18. What jumps out right there, David, is rushing yards by Northern Illinois. 173 rushing yards. It's going to be a first down by the length of the football. Yep. One of the things, Tim, if I may, is you watch the maturation of a quarterback over a period of time. The, the body language that I see right now from Chandler Harness is, you know what, I'm in charge. I'm a redshirt freshman, but I'm in charge. You see the way he conducts himself, the way he goes off to the sideline. I mean, I have to believe that that almost happens unconsciously. Yeah, I think that, I think uh, it kind of did for me. I mean, you just have a certain confidence that uh, even though there are maybe other people, players may not see it, you just feel that it's going to start coming my way, and you start making bad decisions. Tim, I was going to ask you right at the end of the third quarter as Harness keeps it and he's dragged down for a loss of about a yard on the play. Adrian Baker made the tackle. When you played, what were the size of the old linemen? Because I'm looking at the Northern Illinois offensive line. You got 286 at center, 305 at Anye Buagu, 290, 295, 300. I mean, you're seeing some monsters. Well, in college, I can tell you this right now, Dan Feely, who was our center, Dan was at his heaviest was 215. In the California Bowl, he was about 205, and he was he, and he would manhandle people. I mean, it's, it sounds unbelievable, but he was that that little. Into the pros, our guy is the biggest guy back then. I think 280 was huge, you know, and obviously 300 pounds with, with the fridge, um, with with uh, the, the the fridge. William Perry, you know, was a big deal back in the day. 320, and they said he was obese. Oh, now yeah, that's small. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it well, that's is. That's where strength and conditioning has come into uh, come into play. You know, the new methods uh, of the, in the weight room, the new methods of strength, the new methods of conditioning, the new methods of making these guys not only big, but not taking away from their athleticism as they do get bigger. Well, I think also, I think it's got to be the way the food is processed. There's, you see parents that are 5'10", and their kid's 6'6". Six, six. I got I mean, one. I mean, <laughs> I see this all the time. 15 years old, he's nearly 250. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on Thank one heck guys. of a career, and congrats on being back here today with your team. Thanks, Dave and Bob. Make sure you see Tim that. Tim Terrell, the quarterback of the Northern Illinois Huskies, 1983 Cal Bowl team, and Miko Brown takes the hit, picks up the first. Now, Tim, good luck to you. Good luck, Timmy. When you see that number 37, tell him his old coach still loves him. You got Timmy it. Timmy Griffin may be one of the toughest guys I ever coached any place anywhere. Take care, my friend. Good luck to you, and congratulations also. Enjoy the rest of the day. You deserve it. Big play, David. Big play. Miko Brown today, 13 carries, 63 yards. And we are also joined by the very fine athletic director here at Northern Illinois, Jeff Compers in the booth. And Miko Brown takes a handoff, makes a man miss, rips off a gain of four. It'll be second and six. So you got a heck of a ball game, and you got the 1983 club back here celebrating. It's quite a day. Great to have all these guys back here today and honoring Coach Mallory earlier today. Uh, they were a great team. People talk about this team like they were here last week. Uh, they have such fond memories of this group, and I'm glad they could come back and enjoy the day with us. Great football players, but great, great character men. Uh, I had the chance to coach that year in 1984, and as I mentioned earlier, the players that we inherited from Coach Mallory, I mean, they are definitely very conscientious in the classroom, off the field, on the field. It was a real pleasure to coach. Miko Brown picking his way, staying on his feet. First down, Northern Illinois. That was an effort run. That's what I was talking about, David. When you've got a, a, a back with a hot hand, keep giving, giving him the football. Forget that throw downfield. You're running the ball effectively. Offensive linemen are in a rhythm. The, the offensive linemen want to run block. They love running blocking. It's more aggressive. They enjoy it. It, it, it's, it's a, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, it's a lot more fun. Just continue to run the football, stay in this rhythm, and good things will happen. How about this kid out of Moss Point, Mississippi? He is a stud, just a freshman, Miko Brown. Harness barks out signals. He gives it right back to Miko Brown. Cuts it outside, cuts it back in, picks up nine more. How about Garrett Wolf? 
I know he's a good back, but I think I'm faster. Yeah, he may be bigger than I am, but he's not as fast as I am. Watch the burst speed that he shows. You know, ch here, choke the motor down, choke the motor down, wait, let him engage the block, little shake, now burst, now burst. That's that's great, that's great play by that young running back, as you mentioned. Chad Spann is now in, give him a breather. Jeff, you got a nice crowd again today, and it's football weather. You it is football it weather, yeah, you can feel it, and uh, people are excited. Chad Spann picks his way first down. Huskies, they move the chains. It'll be a first and 10. What else going on this weekend? I know you're honoring the Cal Bowl team. We honored the Cal Bowl team, played a little golf with the guys yesterday. They had a, a nice golf. dinner. Oh, yeah. It was beautiful weather here in DeKalb. It always is. You know that, Cap. <laughs> these are football players, Cap. Yeah. David, these are, these are not basketball right. players. They, 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 they my thrive in this in, weather. My sticks are in storage. <laughs> We got out there and had a good time, and then they had a dinner last night, and it was a very fun day, and cap it off with today. Harnish gives it span, and that play will go nowhere. Tried to stretch play, and he will be knocked down, loss of about a yard and a half or two. Also a new soccer field today. Yeah, we just dedicated the field today, and we had a lot of former uh, track athletes out there, both men and women's teams, former uh, soccer players from both our men's and women's programs out there and uh, our, our president was out there along with uh, our executive vice president Eddie Williams and Jeff Dower who really made it a very special day that you can see some of the field today and uh, our men won so uh, it was a good day to dedicate the field and we won one to nothing against the Falcons looking for the double Falcon win now. that's it Harness going to step back and keep it make a man miss Rip off a gain of probably nine. It will make it a very manageable third and two. Harness just broke 100 yards rushing for the game. His first career 100 yard rushing game. David, the great thing about these quarterback draws that we're seeing, there's no scheme in the blocking. All it is is to get a, a hat on a hat, a man on a man, take your man the way he wants to go and let Harness break opposite of your block. When you play with, and you're an old football coach, when you've got wind like this, you've got to adjust. And, and, and we knew that we were going to have to run the ball today, and that's evident in how we've called this game thus far. Bowling Green will take a timeout. 13-10, we'll take a break and come back. Jeff, thank you for being here. Thank you, Cappy. I appreciate it, Bob. Good to see you. Thank you. Here's something to celebrate. A new Applebee's neighborhood value. Endless favorites starting at $9.99. Choose from sweet and meaty riblets, panko crusted shrimp, or golden delicious chicken tenders. Your choice, all you can eat, starting at $9.99. Be ashamed not to have a cold beer with that. It's an all you can eat dinner, but you gotta hurry. Endless riblets, shrimp, or chicken tenders, starting at $9.99. Only at Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. Feeling the crunch? Like maybe now isn't the right time to buy? Think again. Your Buick Pontiac GMC dealers are ready to say yes to great financing offers. Introducing financing that fits. See your dealer for access to hundreds of banks and credit unions all competing to get you the best rate possible. Even with no down payment for qualified buyers. Yes to big cash back, like 3,000 cash back on Pontiac G6. And yes to the best coverage in America on most Buicks, Pontiacs, and GMCs. Say yes and visit your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealer today. All right, 8.55 to go in the ball game. 13-10, Bowling Green. You talk about an old-fashioned slugfest. Let's take a look at the Huskies' leading rusher per game, by game. Miko Brown's done it three times, Chad Span twice, Justin Anderson once, and Demarcus Grady once. I think we call that distribution. That's what we call spreading the ball around. Well, and, and right now you've got a, a, another dynamic to this offense in the person of Chandler Hornish. And, and, and I mentioned, he, you know, he will progress. He, this game, he'll build on this game. The maturation of this quarterback has been something special to watch. Harness keeps, picks his way, and he will be short on third and one. I do not believe he picked up the first down. Fourth down, David. What do you do? You're downwind. You take the field goal? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the points, David. Definitely kick the field goal. I agree with you. Because you know what? You're going to kick off and you're going to have great field position yet again. You're playing 
very well defensively. Chances are the ball's going to end up on the 20-yard line, 80 yards to go downfield for, for Bowling Green. If you make the field goal, you kick it off. I mean, every, uh, this is, a uh, to me, this is, this is the only decision. Dit Benner will hold for Mike Salerno. Snap, set, kick is perfect. Ball game tied. 13-13, we'll give you drive details when we come back. 8.08 to go, locked up at 13. It's a 40th anniversary celebration at Casey's General Stores. All month, sign up to win free gas for an entire year. You could be a big winner just like Elizabeth Reed from Geneseo, Illinois. Casey's, it's all good. Seriously, mornings just go better when you grab some breakfast. Whatever. Ow. Start your day off right with any two McMuffin sandwiches for just $3. Now at McDonald's. Hey, when I played basketball, which was a while back, it was all about fun. The one thing you need to have, man, is that attitude. 48 minutes of intensity. That's what it's all about. What we used to call it back then, control madness. Yes, attitude. And the Bulls, you need to have that. You got to have it if you want to win. Are you ready for this? We have to bring it like the Bulls. I want some intensity with that cowbell. Come on. Intense Bulls coverage before, during, and after the game on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Monday on Chicago Trivia Live, we'll get you set for Blackhawks hockey as they get set to take on the Wild. Plus, we'll look ahead in the Bulls' regular season opener against Scott Skiles and his Bucks. All that and more Monday at 5.30. Friday on Comcast Sportsnet Plus, Jonathan Taves and the Blackhawks try to trick the Dallas Stars and treat them to a loss at the UC. Coverage starts to Blackhawks pregame live. Blackhawks stars in HD Friday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. Fans' best friend. All right, welcome back. Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. Nice crowd on hand today. Here is the University Plaza. It's where to live, the scoring drive. 16 plays, 72 yards, time 8.05 off the clock. Salerno banged through the 25-yard field goal. So the Huskies have had two drives here in the second half that have used up nearly 19 minutes of possession. You know, we talk about the old saying, the best offense, the best defense is a good offense. And, you know, you keep, you keep Bowling Green off the field offensively. And, you know, and as I mentioned before, you, know, you kick the field goal because you know chances are the way Salerno's kicking going to make the field goal. Now you kick it off. Now they've got 80 yards to go into the win. Eight minutes, eight seconds left. Let, let me digress here just a little bit, Dave. You know, and Jimmy, Bobby, they did win the toss, Northern Illinois, and deferred so they could set this up. Exactly, and I agree with that too. I think, and, and that's all part of coaching. Jim Phillips was an outstanding athletic director here. Okay, and you know you're curious who's the next guy who's coming in. Jeff Comfer. My hat is off to Dr. John G. Peters, the president of this university, because he hit a home run with Jeff Comfort. I mean, he is a perfect, perfect fit. And he's got a football background on top of it. He's a former football coach and a really good guy. Sheehan, wide receiver screen, and that's blown up. Absolutely drilled by Melvin Rice. My least favorite play in football. We've seen it from both sides of the uh, of the line of scrimmage today, and I don't think we've seen positive yardage with it yet. Rice comes up, bammo, big play, good analysis. It takes too long. Melvin Rice comes up, but you know, and you just can't tackle. You have to wrap them up in this day and age. She enhanced the Bullock, and he's dragged down. Drilled by Mike Krause, number 58. And it will be a third and 15. I mean, this is a good push up front, an excellent push up front, and then a recovery to come back to the football. You get too far upfield on that play, David, and it creates lateral seams in the defense. You have to break down, and now you become a linebacker. And again, a good job of not only tackling, but a good job of wrapping up so there is no hidden yardage. Tyler Sheehan, the Bowling Green Falcons. Third and 15, he's gonna throw, looking. English had a hand on him, he evades it, finds his man Partridge. 
and that will be a Bowling Green first down. Credit Tyler Sheehan. He felt pressure from Larry English. He stepped up to evade it and found his man Partridge for the first down. Tyler Sheehan comes up big here. Stays with the play. Stays with the play. Squares his shoulders up. Wait until the receiver clears the coverage. It's zone coverage. He clears the coverage. Good patience. Ball's put right on the money. Excellent call, excellent execution. First down, Bowling Green, huge play. Sheehan, and he's going down in a heap. Craig Rush. Looked like the quarterback draw that we've seen Northern Illinois run a ton today. And he turned and big Craig Rush, 6'4", and 265, was waiting for it. Craig Rush just beat the offensive lineman right out the get-go. No questions asked. They had a tight end on him. It looked like the tight end may have had a missed assignment in any event. He came and came and made a big play. Yet another want to guy on the defensive side of the football for the Huskies. Sheehan looking, pressure's coming his way. Throws, broken up, Josh Allen. Well, Tracy Clays, the defensive coordinator, has gone to a blitz package here that I have not seen them use. You've got a corner coming here. You've got a linebacker coming here. He's basically being rushed by eight. Well, Jake Kaufman, 54, 6'5", 245, a sophomore, out of German Valley, Illinois. He's 24 years of age. The 24-year-old young man, two tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. He's an ex-Marine, and he plays with a motor. Timeout, Bowling Green. What a wonderful one story, left. David. A magnificent story of a young guy who went off and defended our country and now has come back to play collegiate football. And I believe that, he, if I have it right, he is not on scholarship on football. He's on the GI Bill. He walked on the football team, said, I'm an ex-Marine. I'm 24, I want to get my education, and I'd love to play football for you. And he's from the area, German Valley, out near Freeport, and has made a huge contribution. David, aside from the obvious, his, his, his ability to play the game and his background, you know the maturity that he brings to the locker room? Oh. This is a guy that the minute he walks in, you're looking up to this guy. I'm certain that his reputation preceded him when he came in here. We're getting a guy that's been in the Marines, has been two, two tours of duty in Iraq, and he's going to be on our football team. He adds an awful lot, and my hat is off to him. I respect those great women and men that day in and day out defend this great country. Absolutely right. I wish him nothing but the best. It's a great, great story. Third and 16. Does Sheehan have something in his bag of tricks? You look at his numbers right there. Boy, defend the first down. Screen pass to Partridge. Drag down. And, and there's your guy again, David. There he is. Jake Kaufman roars up. Drops him, and Bowling Green will have to punt. I mean, here, here he watched him rush the passer, make the adjustment. I mentioned before, now he's a linebacker. Bammo! And you know what I see about with these Northern Illinois defenders? They all wrap. They're not shoulder tacklers. I mean, and you know, you've heard me say, the want to, I want to get to the football. I want to make the play. The hallmark of any great defense is great for sure. And the punt is blocked. It will roll and be picked up down at the 36-yard line. Success builds upon success. Great special teams play. Jay Sabell, special teams coach. Great call, Jay. Great execution by, by the punt rush team. Blocking that kick. Good snap. It's just pure pressure. Landon Cox, number 80, a wide receiver. Got in there and got a hand on it. And that sets Northern Illinois up in business at the 37 yard line with 4.51 to go and they're going downwind which gives them the advantage. The psychological advantage, the psychological uplift that you receive from a big special teams play like that uh, jumps right out to the offensive side of the football. 
I think this was going to be a hurry, hurry play. Jerry Kill saw something he didn't like by hurry, hurry. Run out there, snap the football. Jerry Kill calls a timeout. All right, they're down to one timeout. We'll take the break with them. 4.51 to go. Fresh at Jewel Osco. It's what we're all about. It started with an idea to offer the finest meat, seafood, produce, and baked goods around. And even though we've been serving Chicago for over 100 years, we never stop looking for new ways to improve. So whatever you're in the market for, you can always find it here, fresh to your family, from Jewel Osco. Advance your career with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. I was able to balance my MBA with my professional life as well as my personal life. And best of all, NIU's MBA program is AACSB accredited and affordable. I was impressed with the knowledge and experience of the professors, and the program provided me with a well-rounded business education. The affordability and convenient locations made my decision easy, and it made my MBA a reality. Designed for the working professional, the MBA program at Northern Illinois University. Jumpstart your career today. All right, 451 left in the fourth. Don't forget coming up the Casey's post game show and the Casey's coaches comments post game show. Casey's general store is the official convenience store of NIU Athletics. Let's take a look again at the block punt. This is Landon Cox, number 80, making a play, Bobby. Well, it's all that first step, the way he comes off the football. Now look, they engage, they engage offensively, they engage the punting, engage every single person on the line of scrimmage. What that means is that there is a count. They count from one side to the other. They could not account for Cox, but at the same plan in Cox, but at the same time, he still had a magnificent effort. Miko Brown up the gut. Miko Brown rips off six. Ball okay. at the 31. In the huddle right now. In the huddle. Guys, take care of the football. Nothing foolish. Stay calm. Look at the blocking. A man on a man. They pulled the right guard. He comes around. The fullback gets a big block. Look at that gap, David. And you see, just as it started to collapse, that pad level that he shows. Jeff Nelson, our great producer, said, I could have run through that one. Well. <laughs> I don't know oh, if I could have. I was goodness not me. real quick. I don't know if I could have got through it. Hand off Miko Brown. Miko Brown cuts it back. He'll be dragged down. It will be about a yard short of a first down. It will be a third and one. Clock ticking. We've dripped under the four minute mark. We're at 350 and counting. Big call here. Big call. Got the fullback coming in. Okay. Got the fullback coming in. Connor Flayhive. My guess is that we're going to see yet another lead play, a lead block play by Playhive, and see the ball being handed to the, to the tailback uh, inside the tackles. There he is in motion. He's going to look at that linebacker right there, David. There it is. Miko Brown picking his way, and I think he's got the first down. He's got the first down. Now, you see that fullback, Playhive. Fullbacks right now are dinosaurs. A lot of people will use a tight end in that situation with that rock motion back and forth. Motion going one way, coming back the other way. Watch Playhive here. He's the lead blocker right to the right of your screen. Just enough right there. Miko Brown finds that seam, takes that first. Again, take care of the football. This is what you're talking about. From the other side of the football, Bowling Green coaches are saying, get a hand on the football, strip the football. This is the old story of running your best back over your best offensive lineman. It's as simple as that. Hand off Miko Brown, changes directions. Knew that play was really pretty much doomed from the start. Picked his way maybe for a yard. Credit the Bowling Green defensive line with a real nice job. But here, watch this. You know, a, a good running back, a good running back in progress never gets into negative yardage. Right there, shoulders square. When your shoulders are square, you give yourself a three-way go. The left, the right, or straight ahead. You turn your shoulders prematurely, you've only got one way to cut. <laughs> a 
Harness going to keep it. Design play. Cuts it back up. Harness may have moved the chains on his own. We'll see where they spot it. Just a big short, David. Yes, he will be a yard short. Clock is dripping down. We're at the 150 mark and counting. You know, when you talk about offensive packages, three guys come in, three guys come out. Everybody has to be on the same page. That's sideline organization. That's game management. And Coach Jerry Kill does a magnificent job of that. Chad Spann is now in at tailback. Takes the handoff. Spann moves the pile. Spann has a first down. There is Clock nothing. Clock stops at 122 to move it. This is not spread offense. There's nothing. This is about guys that want to line up and come off the football. Pad under pad from the offensive line. Great blocking by the fullback. This is old-fashioned mid-American football, mid-American conference college football, and it doesn't get any better because it still comes down to blocking, it still comes down to tackling, and it still comes down to a back who will not be denied. Harness out of the gun, span the single back in the set. Snap, Harness, he's going to keep it, designed that way, and he'll be knocked down right around the 13-yard line. Down to Jim Blaney. Field conditions, what are they like, JB? Well, it looks like we're going to come down to a field goal here, David, and I like to try and kid myself the wind is dying down, but it's not. But to channel my inner Johnny Miller, if there's a field goal attempt, it's going to be a hook shot into a slice win. Back to you. All right there, Johnny Miller. Chandler the Harness. golf analogy. Northern Illinois with one timeout left. The ball sits at the 13, so you're looking at a 30-yard downwind. Plenty of leg from Salerno. You know, and, and, and don't take this for granted. Chandler Harness right there, he, he runs the draw play. If it's not there, he pops to the outside, to the left, or to the right. That's not what he did. He knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to carry the football regardless of what the yardage would be and get it into the middle of the field for Salerno to have an opportunity to kick the football in the most of optimum uh, conditions. All right, this is... Northern Illinois' final timeout. Now, when take us inside the mind of a coach. When you look at the clock, he's standing there with the official. At what time he takes it at 15:4? Tell us why. Well, one, one of the things that you want you want to do first of all, you want to be, you want him to be comfortable. You want your kicker to be comfortable with the situation. Plus, it's also only second down. That's exactly right. You called it right there. I mean, you answered your question. So if you have a bad snap, for people wondering, we've gotten right. this email after right, one of our Right, 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 exactly. If it's less than fourth down, if it's a bad snap, you, you kick fall it again. on it and kick it again. Kick it again. Once Absolutely. the kick's been tried, obviously, Done deal. all bets are off. All bets are off. It's right. Now, the problem is, with no timeouts left, bad snap. Bad deal. Bad deal. Pick it up and spike it. And timeout bowling green. One of my favorite kicker stories when I coached here with Coach Lee Carson, we had it, we were in uh, pregame prep. And I, where, that's where you go through the, you know, the entire situation. What would you do if this were the situation? You know, and he said to our kicker, he said, "What, what do you like to do if they ice you? If they ice you, what, what, what do you want to do?" He came over to Coach Carson and he said, "I want to come to you for encouragement." Oh my goodness! <laughs> I mean, everybody's got a kicker story, but that might be my favorite kicker story. You know, one thing he's got—you know—he has to stay loose, continue to scratch, keep the foot warm, and you know, and all those other guys. You know, we, I, I mentioned the term operation before. What's the operation? Okay, the operation is lining up. The operation is getting the snap back. The operation is getting the hold, and then eventually, obviously, the, the most important part of the operation is getting the kickoff. But you have to take all those things in consideration, and you practice against mistakes in the situation with the operation, and you practice on the clock every day. Here we go, 15-4 to go. Salerno out of the hold of Dittbenner. Snap, set, it is perfect. Northern Illinois has taken the lead. 16-13 with just 11.9 left on the clock. 
David, this is classic Midwestern end of October football. You couldn't set up better stage, my friend. All right, now, people who are watching in the Chicago area, if you're watching in Atlanta, a couple of weeks ago, the Chicago Bears take the lead with exactly 11 seconds left. Lovey Smith elected to squib kick. It led to the Atlanta Falcons driving for a game-winning field goal. You won't what see a squib kick. What do you do here? Well, David, with this wind here. I mean, in Salerno, well, his were in legs. A dome that well, time. kick the football right off, kick it into the end zone, come to play on the 20-yard line, 11, uh, almost 12 seconds left from the 20-yard line. They've got 80 yards to uh, score or attempt to uh, tie the game with the field goal. No way. You kick this football away. There's no squib kick. You worry about a squib kick, you kick kick a squib kick when the conditions are not like this because the one thing you don't want in this situation is an organized return. In other words, giving the other team an opportunity to get shoulder to shoulder they, and, 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 and execute a good kickoff return. This ball is going to go into the end zone, David. All right, eight plays, 24 yards. The University Plaza scoring drive to 439. Salerno does the honors. A 30-yard field goal. Will it be the game winner? We'll know when 11.9 tick off the clock. Mahoney and Lewis are deep. There was a, there was a problem with uh, from the Bowling Green sideline with, with getting everybody out on the field. They were a man short. Got 11 now. As do the Huskies, and we are ready. Salerno, a line driver. He did not go for the end zone. Bowling Green picks it up. Football's loose, and Northern Illinois recovered. And they are going to win the football game. David, I do not think he split kicked that football. I think he over it. And that's what I, what I was going to mention, the golf analogy to kicking a football. When you try to really just come off the tee with that ball, you know where it goes most of the time. I think he over kicked the football. Ended up, though, a, a, obviously a very, very uh, you know, good situation. The ball pops up in the air right into north, in the hands of Northern Illinois. And as you said, the rest is... His history is insane. Tyree Daniels, number 23, was the man on the spot, comes up with the football, and this one's over. Victory formation for the Huskies. Salerno will have the game-winning field goal. The Huskies have won this game when 4.8 tick off the clock, but that one is a good one. That one is a good win from a Northern Illinois perspective because, boy, it was a dogfight. Well, and let's talk a little bit about Bowling Green. Bowling Green came into this game. I mean, they've been an up-and-down football team. They came in here a well-prepared football team, a hard-fought Mid-American Conference game, as good as it gets in college football. Harness takes the snap, hands the ball to the referee, and Northern Illinois has won again at home. They beat the Falcons of Bowling Green. 16-13 is the final. A whale of a ball game. The two coaches shake hands. And there is Chandler Harnish, who rumbled for over 100 yards on the ground today. It was a tough day to throw with strong winds down on the field here at Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. And the two teams shake hands. The Huskies get the victory. The Casey's post-game show is coming up. Stick around. We'll be back with more on Comcast Sports. Everyone has a special talent or aptitude. At NIU, world-class faculty work closely with each and every student to help them identify and develop their own unique skills. NIU students participate in groundbreaking research, get hands-on work experience, explore their ambitions, and find their niche. It's the hallmark of an educational experience that is second to none. Discover your genius at NIU. This broadcast of Northern Illinois Husky football is brought to you by 
Fatty's Pub and Grill, the official tailgate home of NIU Athletics. Village Commons Bookstore, for all your Husky clothing and souvenirs, visit vcbs.com. Applebee's, try Applebee's car side to go. You call it in, we bring it out. Casey's General Stores, the official convenience store of NIU Athletics. Casey's, a convenience store and a whole lot more. Blaine's Farm and Fleet, I found it at Farm and Fleet. Jewel, we take one stop shopping to the next level. TCF Bank opens seven days. The University Plaza, it's where to live. The NIU MBA programs take the NIU MBA challenge. Kishwaukee Hospital, health, heart, home. And Resource Bank, where banking is a pleasure. All right, 16-13, the final, a whale of a football game. It is our Casey's post-game show and Casey's Coach's Comets post-game show. Casey's General Store is the official convenience store of NIU Athletics. Casey's a convenience store and a whole lot more. I'm David Kaplan with Bob Kamel. Your thoughts, this was a whale of a game. I thought Jerry Kill really handled the final moments beautifully. Oh, he did. He's done an outstanding job of taking over the taking over the Northern Illinois football fortunes. As I mentioned on the, uh, early on, David, every week his team improved. Every every week it becomes more his football team. But I have to say this: I am so happy for the 1983 team that's come back here after 25 years and have them watch a football game because this was their kind of football game. This is the kind of football they played when they won the Mid-American Conference as well as the California Bowl. All right, down to the field, Jim Blaney with the kicker who gave Northern Illinois the victory, Mike Salerno. All right, thank you very much. We're here with Mike Salerno. Three field goals today, Mike. Tied a school record with the 52-yarder. It was about as good a day as you've ever had as a kicker? It was a good day as a kicker, but I think what we have to look at is this was a team win. We uh, did it as a team, special teams, defense, and offense. I was just doing my part. Well, everybody did, and there were some great drives there in the second half. Talk about winding up and kicking the game. It wasn't extremely long, but I guarantee you had to be looking up at those flags a few times, right? Yeah, I was a little bit, but I always pick out just a fan in the background who's waving their hands. I just try to kick it right to them, so I just picked my target, and I was able to hit it. So. Hey, we got to ask you, what happened to that last kickoff? It was a mistake on my part. I tried hitting it too hard, and I messed it up. So. But everything turned out okay, so yeah, congratulations. Thankfully. thankfully. All right, Mike Salerno with three field goals. State ties the school record. And, Jerry, um, I, a character win by your guys. It seems like we say that after every game, but talk a little bit about Chandler Harnish because it sure seemed to me like not only did he play well at quarterback, but he also became a real leader today, too. Well, it was a tough day. He got off and, and threw two interceptions, and one of them, the receiver ran the wrong route, and the other one was his. And I think it was a frustrating first half, but you always prove yourself as a quarterback if you can come back from adversity. And uh, he did a good job of that. We, we did some things that we know he could run the football, and we took advantage of his skills today in running the ball and it helped us win. The defense has been dominant in the last handful of games, but how big was it for the offense to have those two long drives in the second half? Well, we challenged them at halftime, and they've answered the challenge. The one thing about these kids, they've done about everything I've asked them to do, and uh, just real proud of them. Jerry, congratulations. Good luck next week. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, David, back to you. All right, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jerry and Mike Salerno. Chandler Harness, Bobby, our Adidas player of the game. Adidas, the official outfitter of NIU Athletics. He had a huge day. He did have a huge day. Over the past four weeks, we've watched the maturation of a quarterback. We've watched a young guy grow up week in and week out. This is his football team right now. His body language, his composure, the way he gets the plays in, his leadership and everything. This young guy is going to be something very, very special before his time's through here and at Husky Stadium. Just a redshirt freshman, he did a wonderful job running the football on a very chilly, that, windy Vincent? day, taking care of it. And he overcame adversity. Those two, two picks. Would, exactly. Those two picks put, would have put a lot of guys, you know, kind of questioned himself. He continued to play with confidence. He continued to exude confidence to his, his teammates in the huddle, on the sideline, and that's a huge part of being a quarterback. Also, Miko Brown, Chad Spann, a real good tandem of running today by those two guys, and you got great blocking from the big hosses up front. Oh, no, no doubt about it. But you know, one of the things you can't emphasize enough, Jerry Kill and his staff have come in here and taken over this football program and have done a magnificent job. No one expected Northern Illinois to be this type of a football team thus far this year. They are ahead of schedule. They're recruiting well. The 
future right now at Northern Illinois in regard to football is just has a huge upside. All right, quick look at the final stats. There are the passing numbers. The rushing yards, 233. And look at time of possession, 38-37 to 21-23. Penalties a non-factor, 19 Northern Illinois first downs. The team that dominated the stats was the team that won the game. 233 yards rushing. That tells the entire story to me. All right. The broadcast rights for this event have been granted to Comcast Sportsnet by Northern Illinois University. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Comcast Sportsnet and NIU is strictly prohibited. That is going to do it from DeKalb for Bob Kamal, Jim Blaney, Hollywood Todd Armour, our spotter. I'm David Kaplan saying so long from Husky Stadium. Huskies win at 16-13. Proceeding an exclusive presentation of Comcast Sportsnet and Northern Illinois University. Huskies winning. The fall savings event at Tough Shed. Through October 31st, save up to $2,000 on a Tough Shed garage. Tough Shed garages and storage buildings, coast to coast. Call 1-800-BUY-TOUGH or visit toughshed.com. Sometimes, when people are confronted with an extraordinary sales event, they can behave rather badly. So it's with some trepidation that we announce the Land Rover 60th 